Hello, I am Daniel Bloodworth. We are Easy Allies, and this is the Easy Allies podcast. This week, I am joined by Michael Huber. Hello. Back in action. Back in action. Michael Damiani. How's it going? Uh, in the control room, making it all happen, we've got Isla Hink. Hi. Don's back there somewhere. <laughs> hey, Donnie boy. And Gabby's watching over us. Also back in action. Back in action, Gabby yeah. as well. Yeah, Gabby was out sick last Unsicked. week. Unsicked. Yeah. Uh, friends, we're here to talk about what's new, what's news, and what we've been playing. Uh, I got to check out uh, Unknown 9 Awakening last week, so I'm going to mm. get into all of those details, tell mm. you how that game plays. Uh, we've also uh, got impressions on uh, the Outlast Trials mm. and Slave Zero X from mm. Dawn. Going to get Dawn in here. Uh, plus, we've got the patrons' top 10 detectives. Uh, Warner Brothers is at it again. Uh, and in hindsight, going over all those notes and all those emails and stuff, that uh, Xbox Partner preview thing was actually pretty cool. I liked it. Some good games. Good games. Shown off there. Changing the narrative, dude. No yeah. doubt. Uh, but before we get started, we must answer the wrong question. Mm. What? Which lighting cue do I use for the what? The lights aren't working. Keep oh. going. <laughs> lights. Okay. Uh, what new power-ups are you hoping will come out of the question blocks in the next Resident Evil game? Hmm. Akuma. <laughs> too, too crazy? Great, great, great. Yeah, great. it would just be whatever we use for correction. Like, yeah, I do. Yeah. So I can do Raging Demons. Great everyone. answer. It's pretty good. Um, A literal umbrella. <laughs> yeah. An actual umbrella. <laughs> you can use it for defense. You can use it to attack. You can use it for traversal. Gunbrella. <laughs> then play Gunbrella. Play that. He's beginning to Gumbrell. <laughs> Gumbrell. Uh, I... Give me a fire flower. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a fire flower and a Resident Mr. Evil Mr. X game. coming at you. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> or even a super mushroom. That'd be great. So like all good. of a sudden, just Leon just gets huge. <laughs> just starts kicking over zombies. Picking them up, <laughs> slamming them down. Ilo, what's on your question block? Huh? Uh, question blocks in a Resident Evil game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mario himself. Mario <laughs> he just comes out and starts fighting alongside Mario you. Mario comes out, but then he, he doesn't understand what's happening. And so he's just kind of like terrified and he eventually just has a psychotic break and starts like screaming. Could have Yoshi. He's used to those uh, ghost houses. He can handle it. You got a Yoshi egg in there. Yeah. Discs of the game Silent Hill 1. And you can frisbee them at the enemies. <laughs> you don't want to waste those discs though. Eh, they're worthless. You get Silent Hill HD collection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the PS3 one. Dude, Liquor versus Yoshi Bloodworth Tongue Wars? <laughs> what if they fall in love? <laughs> or they just get tongue-tied. There's a new... F- the next fan fiction... They're trying to fight right? each other, but they can't help. They, just, <laughs> they can't pull each other apart. Those liquor tongues, dude. <laughs> Don said that one writes itself. <laughs> Knife-edge tongue. <laughs> ah. Uh, all right, uh, let's get started. Uh, so we had that Xbox partner preview. What is popping up? Come on, Windows. Uh, Windows. With that Xbox partner preview, it started with Unknown 9 Awakening, uh, which is a game we hadn't seen for it's a, a couple mouthful. Of years. It's a mouthful on that name. It could just be Unknown 9, you know? Well, the yeah, thing, I think you got to drop the Awakening. Well, no, no, well, here's why. I don't care if Awakening is contextual to the game. Just Awakening it's too much. is the game. Unknown 9 is the whole franchise. That's the thing. Ah. Uh. So, they've so you're Drop locked the franchise in. Then. Yeah, so th- we're playing the teaser oh. from three years ago. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, all this right, is when we right. first saw the game. I think it was the Game Awards or it's something like that. It's this game? It's this game. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was a cinematic teaser from years ago. <gasps> yes. Um, so we finally. Oh, wow, yeah, I remember that. I got to see uh, 40 minutes of this game and talk with uh, he- one of the heads of the studio and all of that. Before we begin, Blood Earth, can yeah. you tell me what Unknown 9 is? Are you going to get into that? Yeah, so okay. they're, they're doing the whole transmedia thing. So got there's, it, got So it. the game is one thing. Okay. There's also a series of books. Okay. There's also comics. Okay. There's also a podcast. How old are the books? Do you know? Uh, I think. I think they've just started coming out. It's, oh, okay. It is all related to the, like, it is their own property. So it's a modern thing. Yeah. Got it. It is a new modern thing. Okay, cool. Uh, and they're also developing it in a way that um, you can jump in at any one of these things. Sweet. You can just play the game or you can just read the books and they're all like, different characters, but there's a background lore got it, got that it, got feeds it. into all of it. Cool. I'm uh, always a fan of that. 
Yeah, and the Unknown Nine themselves are actually a group of... Uh, Akatsuki. Essentially. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so basically the world has been going through these like cycles where like civilizations rise and fall and rise and fall, and there's this whole like shadowy thing going on behind the mm. scenes, pulling <laughs> the strings. <laughs> um, and the Unknown Nine are these people who essentially survived one of these cycles and are trying to break the cycle. Break the cycle. Um, and so uh, they've learned how to access the fold, which is this like dimensional energy. I don't know exactly the best way riffs. to explain it. Yeah, yeah. So like they can access these powers. Um, and, um, and then there's other factions involved. There's one faction called the Leap Year Society, uh, and there's another faction called the Ascendants. Uh, so definitely some Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Any of those would be better names. Kind of fi- vibes. Um, and uh, it says, they say that like their goals and stuff can affect like some of the decisions that you make as well. Great. The villain is one of the ascendants. Uh, but your character here, uh, she is uh, Haruna. Uh, she's played by Anya Shalatra, who is the same yep. actress as uh, Yennefer yep. in the, ne- the Witcher Netflix series. Yep, yep. The teaser that we saw She's so great in that show. My was goodness. like ten years ago when her like she first saw her powers. That was the the awakening. Got right? it. So all of a sudden, like she can see just like a little bit into the future, and now in the game you're playing as her when she's older. She's already learned how to use some of her powers and stuff. Cool. Um, and so you have access to those things as combat abilities. Potential uh, flashback opportunities when you're a kid or something, or like early days, Yeah, I days, think that there maybe. are going to be some flashback stuff. Yeah. Uh, the game itself is, uh, and we can start playing the B-roll. This is some some shots of the, the demo that they gave me, uh, which they only gave us like four minutes of footage like compared to the 40 that I got to see, but mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it is um, action adventure, uh, heavy emphasis on narrative, heavy emphasis on stealth. Great. Um, kind of compared to like Uncharted, where you kind of like do this globe trotting thing, towards like yeah. you go from all kinds of different points um, around the world. So there's like cities and jungles and a mansion and a forest and uh, even into the fold dimension itself. Uh, and then you get to use her powers. In combat, and the way the gameplay loop is, is like you kind of go between like stealth and combat, and what they call stepping, and that's kind of what you're seeing here on the screen. Step up, mind jacking. She, yeah, mind she can step dudes. into a character and control their actions. Got it. And so you can step into a guy and have him attack another guy, or you can step into him and have him kind of go near like one of the combustible explosive things. Can so the, she step into a slim jim? Um, <laughs> probably not. I think it has to be a living, oh, living person. Don has corrected me. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, Can she step into the streets? <laughs> Can she step up is the question. Uh, yeah. And then one of the uh, like more subtle things that they showed is like you could step into a guy and then like move him to a place where it's easier to get a stealth grab on him. So That's... rather than like... You know, causing a ruckus and having yeah. him shoot his gun or something, you get him close to where you can like still stay undercover. Seems kind of awesome. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's pretty neat. You get, um, I, I believe you start off with just one step token, quote unquote. So you can only like go into one guy at a time, but then as you progress through the game, you get additional to where you can get up to, they said like basically three that you can use at will, and then there's like a Bonus fourth one, which I forget. There's like some mechanic that allows you to like temporarily have like a fourth step, cool. so that you can like chain together like all of these guys chain and create step. these little combo sequences and and that kind of thing. Um, these levels that they showed me did have like a lot of um, explosives and like you can like light people on fire, and that's actually a way you could like for the stealth. You could like light a guy on fire, and then the other guys go see like what the heck's going on with this dude, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can kind of sneak on by while they're distracted. Um, and then, um, there's a, yeah, like you got these heavier guys, you got some bruisers and stuff. And so that's another thing is like scoping out your environment and figuring out, I was like, okay, do I want to like step into a bruiser? Do I want to step into Always. a machine gunner? Bruiser every time. Do I want to step into a sniper? Like what is the play, you know, because, uh, once you've stepped and you've used your token, then you need to do melee attacks or takedowns mm-hmm. to refill your meter and do it again. Yeah. So again, that kind of a little bit of a loop there. Yeah. 
Um, you also have other uh, fold powers. The uh, others that lost. you have access to. Um, Hell yeah. You can totally cloak like like a like a Star Trek like cloaking device. Kind predator of thing. blood or Yeah, pr- full on predator. <laughs> you can be in the middle of combat, cloak, get out of there. Um, you can also pull up a, a shield that you can hold up as long as you have energy. Um, and so like if somebody's shooting at you, just hold your shield up and like you know, kind of back off or like move into them and wait for them to reload or whatever. Um, there's also, uh, I always love this in games. You get some telekinesis. Yeah. It's like pulling guys off of ledges, flinging them around and so stuff. Fun. That's always so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so freaking Would fun. you say that there are umbric abilities in the game? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> umbric is, is the, the skill tree that uh, she's looking at in the, the B-roll. Uh, so what's interesting about the skill points and upgrade system, though, is they didn't want it to be a, a game about grinding and XP and, and that kind of thing. Great. And so you get your skill points as they're basically items that are hidden around the levels. So you, it's encouraging exploration. I love that. Rather than necessarily like fighting everything Grinding that you can out. fight. So it's, it, then that encourages you also to stealth and to avoid enemies. Right. Because sometimes it's like, well, I can stealth here, but it's like, I need to kill these enemies so I get my XP, so why would I want to yeah, right, stealth? Right. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, And they said that there are not enough skill points in the game to, go, to max, max out everything. So Great. you do have to pick and choose like what your, your play style is, what kinds of things that you want. I don't know for sure about like respecking and stuff like that, if, there, if that's an option at any point. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm um, trying to think about what else in there. Um, there is a, there's like a, I don't think it showed up in the B-roll, but there's like this one place where you're like infiltrating like a big old airship, like a blimp. Yes. Uh, so that. The order. That was like a tease of like what's coming next after this level. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Yeah. Um, I missed the order. But this is being published by Bandai Namco. Uh, it is by a newer uh, development studio called Reflector. Um, and Debut game? Huh? Debut game or the I think thing? yeah, okay. pretty sure it's their their first game um, that they put out. They are um, in Montreal, so it's a lot of uh, Ubisoft folks. Uh, that was one of the things like when I was look when I was looking, at it, I was like, this feels like Far Cry to me at points. There's like things in this that remind me of Far Cry. And it's like, oh yeah, the the guy I was talking to worked on worked Far on Cry it. series for a while, okay. and also worked on For Honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's. Montreal is crazy. There's there's guys on the team f- that have been at EA, at WB, yeah, at that, IDOS, that's everything. Which this is the kind of game I want some folks from IDOS Montreal, yeah, working on because it feels like that kind of thing where like yeah you can kind of like scope out the environment and figure out how you're going to take an approach. Yeah, so. yeah. I think the main thing Bloodworth is how fun that is to do throughout the entire game you know because that mechanic is clearly the central point of this entire game yeah. so it's like if each one of those encounters is fun to you know chain and jump into and and do that instead of eventually just like all right go through the motions mm-hmm. go into this one go into that lure them here like how creative those encounters get will will like carry this game yeah yeah that's the, that's one of the the things that i wonder too in terms of like with the amount of explosive things that they had mm-hmm. around, it's like, okay, is this going to be like me just constantly setting yeah. up a bunch of yeah. guys around yeah. an exploding That's barrel? That's what I was thinking. Like yeah. Every time you're like, all right, lure them to the explosion. <laughs> so I'm curious what like other kinds of traps and things they might have. Other in, traps, in other, other enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some enemies that can maybe like block your jumping. I know games like to do that. They like block your abilities. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You also have another thing. Um, it was in the footage, but I didn't mention uh, another one of your abilities is called peaking, mm-hmm. and that's one like did you see like the bubble that kind of comes up over the screen? And so that's sort of like a detective vision. Mm-hmm. But it, what's kind of nice about it is it feels like they balance that a little bit too. Again, it's like it doesn't fully take over the whole screen. It's like pop it up and then pull it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they wanted to be really limited on the UI, so that's why you just saw a little bit of UI. In yeah. the corner for most of the time. Immersiveness, narrative driven. Well, I, I think also just so that, like, again, the emphasis on exploration. Yeah. So that, like, you want to be able to see as much of the level as you can and catch, you know, where those little hidden areas and stuff might be. Yeah. Because the uh, health and energy upgrades work the same way. Like, you have to find those items to Sweet. increase your health and increase the amount of energy you have. Cool. Yeah. That puts, like, the, the, emphasis on like what's in front of you and what's around you instead of like you know 
so, like you were saying, just the gr- like the grinding to level up in games. Sometimes I'm always thinking like, all right, three steps ahead as I'm just like going to the place to grind the thing to get the thing. Right. Whereas this game just seems like, okay, what is happening right here? Yeah. Uh, and what was interesting is even though they've got all these books and podcasts and all this other stuff going along with it, uh, they said that they're like, they're not l- like looking too far ahead into the future. Like right now, they're just like, we're just going to finish the game. Yeah. And then, depending on what players tell us and feedback and stuff, we'll decide whether we make a sequel or whether we try something different. But I'm rooting for this game with every fiber of my being. Like, these games are, like, the backbone of my life, you know? These double-A, narrative-driven, you know, swimming, potentially, in Seven's games. Uh, And... Yeah, I'm just rooting for it after, like, uh, you know, Immortals of Avium, like, didn't work out. But then, on the other hand, like, I've been going through Banishers, and, like, I get some similarities here, where it's, like, that double A, focus on narrative, some, like, weird kind of mechanics, like, some kind of gimmick-style mechanic, um, but just so much potential as a world to have, like, more of, more in that universe. For sure. So, I'm I'm rooting for this one, Blood. I'm in. Damiani, you, you got any thoughts, any questions? Uh, looks better than my injection. <laughs> that's, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good okay, start. All right. Uh, I do have a question. Why did it say Bandai Namco in the trailer? If you're saying Ubisoft, they no no Bandai Namco is the publisher. They used to work at Ubisoft. Oh, okay. so a lot of the team. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I was a little confused he, for a second. He Sorry. told me like a lot of the Dead Space team used to work at, on For Honor as well. Hmm. It's like a whole bunch of the For Honor people went and made that Dead Space remake. Yeah. So it's a veteran studio. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a new studio, new studio but it's with full veterans. of veterans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for it. New IPs all the time, please. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's such a risk, especially now as we're, you know, in the midst of just like constant layoffs and games underperforming, and just to to swing for a brand new IP. Yeah, is is risky, and I I'm rooting for it hard. Uh, let's move on to uh, the rest of that uh, partner preview. Uh, the next one up, we were all digging. Just it, it, unfortunately, just a cinematic trailer. But, yeah, uh, I want to see the of hand. Are uh, there any in-game like screenshots of this game, or is this actually just it? I feel like <laughs> there were some screenshots, but they didn't really. Okay. Th- like they might have just been stills from got this. It, they didn't look it. that different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the descriptions on this are pretty interesting, though. Um, Third person card slinging occult noir stealth sim. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. Yo, the sim in there though, that immersive sim vibe. Yeah. yeah. That's very that's the best word that they could say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this studio, Riff Raff Games, is headed up by Joshua Boggs, who made a mobile puzzle game called Framed, which apparently was Kojima has said was one of his favorite games of that year. I remember oh, really? this. I'm not, I remember that game. Wasn't it a mobile game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 100%. Yeah. So they were reflecting that. I remember because like, Kojima, Kojima said that, and I needed like, to like play that. I was like, oh, I need to play that then. Dude, I totally remember Dang. that. Uh, you play as Lady Luck, uh, who again, another Metal Gear uh, crossover here, voiced by Debbie Mae West, who is Meryl. Uh, Meryl, Meryl, yeah. yeah. Um, she is a revered former occult detective uh, who is fated to return for one final job to take down her former coven. Love the premise. So witch versus witch combat. Love the premise. Yeah. Um, slink through a hard-boiled city rife with taboo, where knowledge of ritual magic and possession of cursed artifacts separate the haves and the have-nots. Wield Lady Luck's cursed cards to cast a smoke-based menagerie of magic. Navigate around patrolling ruffians by evaporating the smoke. Uh, faced with a group of huddled up goons, even the odds by intertwining their fates with the chain smoker card. Huh. And now any Hilarious. cards cast affect all of them at once. So that's a very dishonored kind yeah. of mechanic right there. Snuff them out with a lethal card or choose an affliction to help Lady Luck sneak right past. Blood, by looking at the first 10 reviews for this game, mm. how many times will the word gambit <laughs> be said? <laughs> There's yeah. your bet. There's your bet a year from now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a hex card that looks like it just basically tags enemies, um, but then you can combo onto other things, which... 
So it's third person. You're like th- actually third person throwing the cards. Yeah. So your cards are basically like ammo. Like do you find but, the no, cards? They're do like they, the do cards they cool all down? seem to have different ev- effects. So like yeah. So they're saying you you use hex and then you use peekaboo, which will teleport you right behind any text target that you can see. Um, so maybe they're on cooldown. So then you can do silent takedowns, and then they also talk about like assembling a deck. Yeah. So choosing what cards to take with you onto a mission. Okay. Uh, called the hi- yeah. highly replayable levels. Okay, so so death loop just popped into my brain. Some mm-hmm. death loop energy here. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> um. There's a hand cannon card. One shot hand <laughs> cannon. <laughs> Nice. Get out of jail free card. Yeah. Uh, and then some of the exploration stuff they talk about here. Uh, hidden passwords to access secret pathways through speakeasies. Interrogate former friends. Uh, settle old debts. Gain new powers. Um, and get new intel and cards to bring the coven leader in. Just hope the cards you pull come out in Lady Luck's favor. Dude. I'm excited, blood. I'm yeah. excited. That was a really cool trailer. I would have loved to have seen gameplay, of course. Yeah. Uh, but in terms 2025, of 2025, so it's a ways off. Yeah. But in terms of uh, the vibes and the premise, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, Game Pass Day One. Wow. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, and it's coming to PC as well as Xbox. Nice. I didn't see any other platforms announced right now, but mm-hmm. PC, Xbox, Game Pass. Cool. Uh, next up, uh, we've seen uh, some trailers of this before, uh, but we finally got a gameplay reveal for the Alters. Um, and uh, this is being published uh, uh, by 11-Bit Studios uh, in Poland. It's crazy. Uh, these guys had a presence. There's like, they have three games in this show. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and if you don't remember the Alters, basically this guy is on this, like, Crazy mobile base that looks like a huge bicycle wheel. <laughs> uh, and he's on this planet where somehow he's the last survivor. But there's this resource called Rapidium, Rapidium. that he can use to essentially like go back into like his past and like make different choices of his life and create these doubles called altars that all have different skills and uh. abilities and and some of them stayed married and some of them are biologists and yeah. some of them are researchers and like just all of these different things that you build up in order to uh, essentially keep the base running and then find a way out, so. To find a way out. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, it kind of reminds me, the way the base looks on the spoke kind of reminds me of like a fallout shelter. Big time. Oh yeah, Yeah, totally. definitely. Damiani, you love space. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts here? Uh, I mean, yeah, that that habitat looks kind of crazy. I mean, and then the environment looks pretty intense too. Yeah, when you go outside. And, um, and I mean, the resources. It, 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 yeah, visually it looks pretty nice, but the you know, hearing the concept the first time about how you like go back and you create like different versions of yourself. Um, I mean, yeah, I just don't you know know how it's gonna like play out but it looks intriguing so here we're with space yeah like the thing is a lot of space games you get like stuck on like a single planet yeah, you like to it's explore. not like fun plus a lot of like the gameplay deep dive like you have your 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 double afters or whatever and you sign them to roles i guess like to like m- like manage the habitat mm-hmm. like yeah. botany and, and stuff like that so I, I guess it becomes more of you know like a, a sim manager God. at that point so i'm not yeah it looks intriguing I'll say Hunger that. And I is like the, starving I, today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks like you know. Again, it looks intriguing. And like, I, you know what? I just want something in the game where you push the habitat and it starts rolling. Yes. I just want to see if that's possible. Same. I, you see a giant wheel on the surface. It's got to roll. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I got to see it roll. Yeah. They said it's mobile. That's the roll. Yeah, I want to. I want to be able to like pilot yeah. it or like set it loose as like like everything's going to hell. It's like all right, screw it, hit the button. It's like there, it does roll in the trailer. Okay, I missed also, it. Someone, also, this game yeah. for me needs a Whalen Utani equivalent. I mm-hmm. need oh, some sure. sketchy. If you're like, like a you. yeah, yeah. 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 If you're like at a terminal every day and it's like sending you messages at the beginning, yeah. like and it's asking how you're doing and stuff, and you have to, so it's like it's like psychological. It's like you don't sound right today or whatever. <laughs> It's like, oh no. 
<laughs> go a little like Blade Some Runner Hell direction too. <laughs> Yo, yeah, now, like, taking us out, sabotaging oh, us. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I find most interesting about this is the fact that they they seem to have gone all in in terms of like developing these characters as as personalities mm-hmm. and and having temperaments and needs and wants and does all. everyone have the same ones or are they different? No, like, are those they randomized? seem pretty different. I mean, I don't know about randomized. It seems to be very based on that history. How you play. Yeah. So, like, how those relationships, you know, like, whatever choices you made to create that person, like, those relationships yeah. carry over. Like, the guy who's, like, still married to, you know, the wife that you broke up with or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and getting with arguments with people and having to, you know, settle disputes and... Multiplicity. Yeah. You love multiplicity, Isla. What are your thoughts? Uh, does not uh, withstand a rewatch. Mm. Mm. My thoughts about alters or, or multiple alters, alters, alters. Uh, it looks cool. I, I like Moon, and that seems more apt. For sure. Um, yeah, this seems cool. I don't know. I hope it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when they made a, a Moon like spinoff? How weird was that? And you played this I never War really is saw Mine, it. right? It wasn't good. What's up? You played this War is Mine. Yeah, I reviewed that thing. I think. Yeah, so like yeah. that was really good in terms of narrative and everything. Really yeah. good game, really, and like super hardcore with its um, survival mechanics, but also really streamlined. Hmm. So it's like you really needed to manage that stuff, but there wasn't a large amount of stuff to manage. You Got know it. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's so, great. Yeah, nice. Um, that's coming later this year. That's also going to launch on Game Pass. So. Nice. Uh, also from 11 bits, Creatures of Ava, which is entirely different. Uh, <laughs> and this is this is interesting because oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the one uh, where you're playing as this woman uh, playing the flute, and you've got all these animals and stuff following you around. Looks so cozy. Uh, this is uh, developed by uh, a pair of uh, Spanish studios, uh, Inverge Studios and Chibig. Uh, Rihanna Pratchett also uh, has. Uh, done some of the writing on this, uh, and you play as this girl named Vic, uh, who is a human explorer who's been sent to this planet to help free it from um, this this infection that's mm. going around. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the people here communicate, and the and the wildlife even communicates through music. And so that's the thing you learn to play the flute from the people that are on this planet. Um, oh, and then you also use this staff um, that she's got which helps clear the infection. And so that's kind of how the combat is contextualized, is that like you aren't necessarily fighting them, you're freeing them from the infection. And so while they're infected, they attack you, and then when you clear the infection, then they become peaceful, lovable little So if you've made creatures. your peace, the devils are really angels freeing you from your life? <laughs> Michael Huber's uh, This War of Mine review was three minutes and 51 seconds long, and he gave it an 8.5. Nice. That yeah, that game emotion is emotional. Yeah. That the, game hits. It's like the wand water mechanic thing going on in some of the, the footage. I, I don't know if you've seen that yet, where she's like looping around some enemies, and it looks like there's just a bunch of – it looks like a fluid thing, but it's not water. Maybe it's like – yeah. I think that's magic. whatever the the thing from the staff is that frees the infection. Okay, so that's that. Yeah, I kind of a little concerned about that part of the gameplay because looking at it, it looked like it could get maybe a little iffy. But otherwise, yeah, visually it looks awesome. And like the it's funny the music thing made me think of sorry like slight spoiler, but Marvel's the planet where anyone can only like talk. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Like they don't understand if you speak regular. I was like, that was so you know, like, silly, but I loved that. <laughs> it was just funny. It was good. But like, it, yeah, <laughs> I watch like this one. You know, like they don't. You can't. You have to like play the flute and then talk, and they don't understand. Yeah. it. it'd be funny. Yeah, one of the other things they say is that uh, once you've gained their trust, uh, you can connect and like see through their eyes. Yo, Siren. Avatar. Yeah. Um, Features of Ava Avatar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it allows you to see from their point of view and control them to interact with different parts of the environment by using their unique traits and abilities. Sweet. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything else there. But, yeah, that's initially going to come out on Xbox and PC this year. Sounds like it'll probably come to other platforms after that. Uh, and then uh, that's also going to be on Game Pass. 
Wait, there's a Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator that you can get right now? Oh, yeah. You didn't see that? No, I missed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they announced that during the Capcom highlights thing. Is that in also this week later? Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Forget I said anything. Um, We saw this weird Roblox thing with Chucky. We can just move on from Bizarre. that. Bizarre. <laughs> can we stream Roblox. Roblox? We need to do it. Roblox. We need I mean, to stream it. Roblox is for has kids. Any, it's, it's a kid's has, thing. We're too has old. Has any too easy old. ally no. even played Roblox even for one minute? No, but my nephew talks yeah, about it to we, me all the time. I want to stream so. this, y'all. The name of the stream is just like 530-somethings play Roblox. Yeah. <laughs> please. Please, we need to. I just want to see it. I need to know. I mean, I, but it even... <laughs> Even at that angle, is like, is it even like a singular game, or is it just like a marketplace? We need to know. know, We need to see. We're too old. (laughs) Yeah, we. I like have no idea. We don't know. It's an ecosystem. (laughs) Also, like, is Chucky too like scary for the target audience? That's what I was thinking, Damiani. It's like Five Nights at Freddy's. It's It's the seventh largest economy in the world. Oh, (laughs) yeah, that is true. They they definitely know. My seven year old nephew at my birthday dinner, I was looking at something on my phone. He saw the notification for Five Nights at Freddy's on Amazon Prime. He goes, Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. you can't watch that, right? <laughs> I was like, you're yeah, seven. No, there, yeah. I mean, well, I was probably seven when Child's Play first came out. Somewhere oh, around Hell yeah. My, yeah. I'll never forget my grandma bought me from Dust Till Dawn on VHS when I was like eight. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I ran a bunch of... Four <laughs> 30-somethings and one 40-something play <laughs> Roblox. This is true. Uh... <laughs> Well, although I'm not specifically clear on Don, but um, <laughs> uh, the Sinking City Two, play this. Yeah. You were, I've been oh. reading about this. I think you're going to be more, even more hyped. I know. I scrubbed out on Sinking City One. I got like four hours in. There were probably too many games at the time. It wasn't an indictment on the game. It was just it wasn't good enough to continue on with where I was at that point in oh, my life. Sure. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Sure, but Huber? Yeah. Kind of like Alan Wake. Yeah. They're going deeper into survival horror with this game. This is going to be focused on being a survival horror game. Okay. Um, And uh, set in a Lovecraftian 1920s U.S. I got to get back to the first one. (laughs) Takes place in the infamous city Arkham. (laughs) <laughs> Shut up. Wow. <laughs> Shut. Now it was, give me the spelling. Give me the spelling. That's from Lovecraft. A-R-K-H-A-M. Jim, okay. All right. Uh, all things called Arkham are, are referencing Lovecraft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now plagued by a supernatural <laughs> flood that has brought decay and eldritch monsters to its streets. Ooh, that's probably the end of the first game. Let's <laughs> yeah. bring El- eldritch terrors. Yikes. Uh, fight <laughs> nightmares and abominations. Explore a rotting city as the rising waters change the landscape. And discover what dark mysteries brought you to this forsaken place. Cool. Uh, standalone story, separate from the original game, so you right. can jump right into this. Great, 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 but I won't, as you know. Ar- <laughs> Arkham first appeared in Lovecraft's short story, The Picture in the House, from mm. 1920. Wow. Um, they're talking about optional ago. puzzles and investigation. This was actually an interesting thing. There's some little open world stuff in the first one. It's not, like, super linear. You can, like, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but they were saying. Ride your um, little boat around. Uh, but they're saying with this is that so like even though they're m- m- going more like survival horror first with this, mm-hmm. um, they're saying that because uh, the past Frog Wars games have been you know, the Sherlock Holmes and yeah. all that stuff, they've been very de- like detective game focused, mm-hmm. uh, and they're saying that with this um, they're going to uh, keep it in there, but it's going to be more of like a like an optional thing uh, without being required to progress. Uh, so, offering tangible gameplay bonuses and eureka moments uh, without it being a requirement to progress. Uh, by taking the time to piece together clues, you'll arm yourself with more knowledge and awareness of your options versus just coming across them by chance. I love that stuff. I cannot think of a specific game right now, but I love the idea of finding optional clues or res- like clues specifically or like story stuff mm-hmm. that helps you in the main storyline later on. I love that. Yeah. Uh, like and, uh, like Butcher Three does that, mm-hmm. you know. You you investigate a little more to find some clues before like accusing someone right. or whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. it's, it's kind of their way of of you know continuing to play to the audience that they've had for the past twenty four years. You know, it's like, hey, you guys know us for these detective games. This is we're taking a bit more of a risk. We're doing something a little different because Sinking City apparently is one of the the better, uh, more received games that they've had. It um, was swimming. 
And it was not sinking. It was swimming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they want to leave those elements in there, even though that they're going for more yeah. this action combat stuff. I'm glad that they got the rights or whatever the hell was going on, too, yeah. with this. Uh, they will be doing a Kickstarter because uh, they said, like with the like with the last Sherlock Holmes game, um, that like that really helped them get through the like unexpected expenses and things that came up because they're still mm-hmm. in the war in Ukraine and they're still yeah. having to like manage that. So, um, and then this is coming to uh, PC and PS5 uh, and Xbox in 2025. Sweet, awesome, nice, very very cool. The first one's probably so cheap to get now. Oh, yeah. I bet, <laughs> it, I bet it might be. Yeah. yeah I bet good 15, 20 bucks. Something yeah. Like. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, Damiani, Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is a... Uh... This is interesting. Xbox on March 21st. They Boom. called it life-changing it is. video game. I mean, Damiani can attest to that. I think the funny thing with this is this should have... like It seems like it's going over pretty well. But this should have been like an easy like home run without like any like foul balls, you know, uh, at the at the bat. And they've had a few foul balls. Um, a lot of the longtime players are trying to put out. I more. love the reference. Keep it going. Dom, I'm right? about to explain why. Because like this <laughs> should have been like a okay. Let me go to another sport. No, slam dunk. Should have been a slam dunk. Okay. Football. But they went up for it and they hit the rim and they missed just by a little bit. But then they got the rebound. And they put it back in. Okay. So they missed on the first attempt because the messaging is very confusing for the free trial stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah. The free trial stuff is throwing people off left and right. First of all, for the beta access, you had to have a brand new account. Could never have been like paid for. It was like, and it was really convoluted and confusing for a lot of people, like existing players who wanted to jump in. Now, with it being on Game Pass Ultimate, they are warning, like players are going out there on Twitter trying to like tweet out saying like, don't claim the free, like the 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 license is free. Don't claim it till you're done with the trial, because once you claim it, you must start paying the sub. So if they're not being it, like upfront about it. that. Yeah. So they're saying like, take your time, wait till the end of the window, you know, cause it's only a certain window. You can claim it, wait towards the end, then claim it. Or if you get through the trial, claim it. So there has been some problems with the messaging on this. It hasn't been as smooth as it could be. But however, despite those little like, you know, bumps in the road, a lot of like a decent amount of people, I would say like it was more than I expected have shown up who are Xbox, you know, owners who did not play this on pc did not play this on playstation mm-hmm. are just showing up and playing it now and it's like in the beta yeah. and are you know ready to play this so it's a uh, you know it's nice to see it come to another platform get and, wrecked world of warcraft yeah. <laughs> like yeah. seriously yeah, no, put it on the damn console year away yeah 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 it's crazy uh but what's not another year away stalker legends of the zone trilogy so cool uh, if, I don't know if you got it queued up, but the, there's a little shadow drop badge. Shadow drop. That Tina's team put on there next to that stalker trilogy. Woo! Poof, we did it. Smoke Poof. shadow drop available today. <laughs> yeah, pay me. <laughs> Seriously, pay up. Uh, refined for console. It's those uh, you know, those original stalker games: Shadow of Chernobyl, um, Clear Sky, and uh, Call of Pripyat. Hell yeah. Um, and then uh, Chornobyl. They, they did uh, up, update that name, Chornobyl. Uh, and they also have an interview on Xbox Wired where you can dig into um, the, the process of moving all of that over to Xbox and how they approached it. Uh, very essential release. Very awesome. You know, Stalker 2 is one of the most hyped Xbox games. Mm-hmm. Um, so allowing people to catch up if they want to. Yeah. Is always welcomed. Yeah, very, very good. Because yeah. I think there's a lot of people like me who did not have a, a PC. There's no one like you, Blood. No one uh, like you. Did not have a PC. We were not into PC gaming when mm-hmm. those games came out originally. Yep. And, you know. I just played the first one on PC, like, back then. And especially. But I was way too young. I got, like, a couple hours in, and I was like, this game is too much right. for my teenage brain, dude. I could not handle it. Yeah, that was, like, that was, that was me with the gold box. D and D games back in yeah. the day on Roblox? seven years old. Yeah, <laughs> like too much trying to figure out a D and D PC RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but anyways, yeah. So very cool for those to be there for Xbox players to get familiar with the it's franchise. Excellent. 
Um, and uh, so are they poor? They're ports, not remasters. Or right, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like some some sequels and new games come out, and it's like, yo, we don't even need a remaster. Just like throw the port on there so we can yeah, Bloodborne catch up. <laughs> Freaking Bloodborne refined for console. What's Bloodborne? <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> Something from a lifetime ago. Yeah, it's from Roblox. <laughs> it's in Roblox. I'm gonna rebuild it in Roblox. <laughs> Uh, our court, I guess. <laughs> Let's play this next one. Yo. Monster Jam Showdown. This was the game of the show for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Monster even trucks. kidding around. <laughs> this looks like the absolute most fun possible. It does look like a blast. So honestly. here's the thing, Huber. So like you know how I said like I was skeptical because I wasn't sure like mo- monster truck games in the past have been sort of whatever. Sure, 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 sure. This is coming from Milestone. These are the same guys that have been doing the Hot Wheels Unleashed games. Yo, okay. Uh, as well as like Street Cred. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have Cred. They've also done a lot of the the uh, motocross games and stuff. So that okay. arena, st- okay, like those okay. arenas and things like that. They know how to do all this. They put out yeah. like, it feels like they put out five games every year. But um, so there, there's that aspect of things. But they do quality work. Uh, and they've got a ton of uh, real um, monster trucks in here. Total of sixty six. Official execute. Didn't even know there were six monster <laughs> trucks. <laughs> uh, Forty trucks included in the base game. Twenty six available through free or premium DLCs. That's a little bit of the catch. Free People had premium. those issues with a lot of the DLC that comes out for Hot Wheels. Free and premium sounds like a battle pass. Free track. Yeah. yeah. Premium they, track. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you can definitely play the games and not worry about any of that stuff. Yeah. But that they definitely milk it as much as they can. Yeah. Uh, especially with these licenses, like. Every, every like a lot of their games the past you know few years have yeah. been tied with specific. There'll be some premiums like this. These are officially licensed things, yeah. so those people want the payouts. Yeah, there'll um, be some premium Hot Wheels ones for yeah sure. crossovers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet they also talk like something like 144 different paint designs, something as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, um, you're going to compete in all three categories of venues. Uh, namely, American football fields, baseball stadiums, and speedways. Baseball stadiums. Um, where they talked about the different layouts. But beyond that, you will be able to play uh, in uh, original environments inspired by the American Great Outdoors. Uh, there's Death Valley, uh, there's uh, Colorado Rivers, and then there's uh, mountains in Alaska. Uh-huh. Yeah. It looked like a cruise in USA type thing. Like, I was getting yeah. like arcade vibes looking at it. Yeah. Dude. Uh, 10 different game modes. 10? Yeah. Uh, mix of uh, arcade stuff on both online, offline, and split screen. So. Music to my oh. ears. Bloodworth split, split screen. screen. You said the magic words. Yeah. Download now. Release <laughs> now. Where are you? It's coming out this year. <laughs> I need to play. Everything, pretty yes. much. PC, PS4, <laughs> PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series. So. Nice. Yep. Yeah. I am I am jazzed <laughs> about that one. Oh, speaking of jazz, Persona <laughs> 3 Reload Expansion Pass. That was a uh, great segue. That was. So you can't buy these uh, piecemeal, I've no. heard? No. That's, this that's is so welcome, ridiculous. Welcome the to Nintendo Strat. Yeah. even, like, <laughs> Then brace the Nintendo Strat. Yeah, I should don't want to look, because this is, like, after the game and shit. Yeah, episode Aegis. Yeah. It doesn't spoil oh, okay, anything okay. from what it said. It's it's not, chill, like, chill, you chill. don't know Plus, any context for it. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you watched this you live. Watched, but you every time I watch, I, if I see something once, though, I don't remember it. Okay. See so, something once? <laughs> why see it again? Yeah, and it's interesting they called it Episode uh, Aegis because that's like the Japanese yeah. name of the original version of this because oh. it was called The Answer Here. Mm-hmm. And it is really, this storm is really bad by me. Okay. It's a bad um, No, there's a storm. Bad storm. Oh, yeah, Jeez. it's raining yeah. here too right now. That, that's um, from here. Like, this, the, yeah, this is a polarizing piece of content. I, I really generally get the sentiment that people don't generally like it, but I mean, obviously, some people like do. the original one. It, like it is a th- it takes place directly after the ending of the game, yeah. so it will provide more context to the ending. Um, and it, it is another kind of like it's only dungeon crawling, I believe. Right? There's no God. Uh, social stuff for this, it, or there's very little. Like there's in the dorm. They're, they're staying, there's like dialogue and stuff, but like I don't think you go back out into any of the areas. Uh, I got a You just keep going here. into an. So, yeah. Um, Wait, I, I d- thought this was the. You can play as the girl. Yeah. 
No, that's not this. Oh. You play as Aegis, but this is not the female main character. Got it, got it. Oh, that's what? what you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah, that's not coming at all, apparently. Oh, so so here's their description, Damiani, which I, I, I uh, we'll just see whether or not. So added to the main game 16 years ago with the release of Persona 3 FES. Yep. Uh, the answer is a major uh, post-ending DLC that expands the story of Persona 3 Reload. Uh, after unraveling the mysteries of the Dark Hour... Uh, fighting epic battles through Tartarus and all the unforgettable events of Persona 3 Reload, the Seas members find themselves trapped in a never-ending March 31st. Yep. Journey through the abyss of time as Aegis undertake new challenges and uncover the cause of this strange fate and the truth of what happened on that day. Yeah. And abyss of time is the new the dungeon that you go to. That's like with a new dungeon crawling. Um, oh. Yeah. It's basically... Yeah. It... it, it the uh, uh, gameplay wise, it's a little. It's going to be long. I think it takes like thirty hours, oh, wow. so it's pretty significant. Maybe okay. longer if I remember. Uh, I only played through it that once. Uses the it price tag a, a little time. bit. Its price is still kind of high, but what is the price? Yeah, 35. I guess the thing is, on a personal level, without spoiling anything, I don't think anything needed to. This tries to give more context and more information about the ending of Persona Three, like the base game. And I actually don't like that huh. because I like how the ending is as mm. it is and trying to go beyond that ending and what they do with this. Ultimately, I for me, it didn't work mm. and I enjoy it. And it wasn't really interesting. Anything significantly new gameplay wise. It was just more challenging content, you know, more of the Tartarus stuff. And I was like, oh, but it's just called something else. Cool. You know, new like bosses. And honestly, it was. I think it was relying too much on people just wanted like these characters were really popular. People wanted to see it and it didn't live up to, you know, what it was. Honestly, honestly, I'm kind of with, like the sentiment that I would rather get rid of this and just have a female main character campaign with the differences that the female character of a campaign brings to the, to the content. Mm -hmm. I would have rather have that than this, honestly. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, my main thing is the fact that they just they don't let you buy it separately is mm -hmm. kind of insane. Yeah, the other stuff I mean, in the wave that, is like was, un, 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 uninteresting. Yeah, oh, that's a those thing. Those music real quick. sets are so, sweet. So I was wondering where the hell I was wondering where the hell it was. So in Persona, all the other versions, of Persona Three, uh, um, uh, Fuka gets the ability to change the music in the dungeon because they're like, okay, I'm done with the Tartarus music. How, like, where's the command to change? I'm like, it's. I'm doing the review. I'm like, where the hell is it? Where the hell is it? I'm like looking up wikis. I'm like, how do you do it again? Like they say, like that doesn't exist. So they're at wave one. It's showing you change in the background. It's part of the DLC. So they locked a feature Whoa. that's been in every other version. And it's like, oh, come on. I'm like, really? Dang. You're not going to add that? So like I get they're adding like the Persona 4 and 5 music. But it's like, could you at least like the Persona 3 music? Let Jeez, me change right. it. In in Tartarus, but well, yeah, and the then the second velvet, one, the velvet costume is, and background music set is that additional? Like, what is the background music there? So that's the same thing. It's going to be for Tartarus. You'll be able to change the music to those velvet room mixes, and then another costume set because there are yeah. you know costume. It sets sounds like the shareholders there. were heavily involved in the expansion <laughs> pass. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like to yeah. me. Because that this is all, that have been. Yeah. The, that's the question. Is like. Should that have been in the, the main background game? music? Yeah. So the background music feature should have been in there. The velvet room costumes probably could have been a bonus for like there, there's a certain challenge, the hardest challenge in the game. And it could have honestly been the reward for that because it actually would have been sent. It made sense contextually who you fight to the, the hardest fight in the game. That's optional. The reward is like kind of fits the billing there. I was like, oh, that would have been a perfect way to do that. Um, and like, I don't know how many tracks they're actually adding, but honestly though, like the answer is like, as I said, it's 30 plus hours. So that, I don't know what the, what did you say the price for 35 this 35 for the whole expansion pass. And uh, the game 70. So it's like about half to 40% long of the game. Like that's not too bad pricing overall. It's just like, I'm just saying it and if they haven't adjusted anything in the answer, it, uh, the old version of it, if it's just literally that updated, it's not, in my opinion, worth it mm. uh, to, to, to experience. I would just go like watch a YouTube summary and be like, oh, God, I'm glad I didn't play that. Wow. <laughs> oh, damn. That's just me. A brutal indictment. Very brutal. Uh, yeah. Very brutal. As you, similar to what you're saying with the kind of weird little confusing things that they did with uh, 14, 
you can also get this with Game Pass Ultimate. Only with Ultimate. You can play this through January 31st, 2025. Huh. Oh, then you lose it. Yeah. Okay. So, so you have to from rent September. It. So you're renting. <laughs> September through January. It should be Game Pass to rental. Rent. <laughs> That's yeah. expensive. Okay. I mean, That's it's a better value, like, probably. What? Yeah. Uh, not Nintendo. Who does it? Uh, like games rotation. PlayStation still does that, right? Uh, don't games. they rotate games, or is that do they get rid of that with their, their games rotate changes? off? But whatever. Like game Pass sometimes too. Yeah, games definitely come on. Yeah, oh yeah, of, of like yeah. Uh, it's just weird that it's like only an ultimate, yeah. and, and it's that, like from the get go. Oh, yeah, you know the, when it's, it's expiring. Only on ultimate. That's yeah. a, like part of me. Yeah, and there are so many conflicted thoughts because uh, you know I I love thinking about Grand Theft Auto and bringing it up any chance I get. So with uh, GTA 6 coming out, they were like, yo, our game should be more than $70 because there's so much in it. Like sure. GTA 6 is going to be huge. Sure. Uh, so I see where like the business heads are thinking of that. It's like, why make a hundred hour game when we can make a 10 hour game or something and charge the same price. So like, I get that. But then I think of uh, Persona 5 Royal. Damiani and like Persona 5 is one of my favorite games of all time, but you had to buy like the whole new version, right? You couldn't just buy like yeah, Royal yeah, as DS. Yeah, it's like, what yeah, is that? Think, yeah, that was it. Yeah. I mean, that's this is the, uh, I mean, this is Atlas and Persona. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of these, de like yeah. the developers, I so, mean, it's not, I don't know if it's just Atlas and just the development teams, like this is what yeah. they, uh, they know their value. So, I referenced like it might not just be Atlas because we just had a thing with Vanillaware interview where they said, Vanillaware denied Atlas the to uh, rights to put it on PC for uh, Unicorn uh, Unicorn Overlord. 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 Thank you. <laughs> it slipped in my mind. So like they and they, there's stories that they ran out of yeah. money during making development. So some like with Persona though it's a proven you yeah. know it's a proven well, didn't game they just put series. A, so like a remaster of this exact game out like a year a ago? year ago yes exactly and that had been locked that version had been locked to PSP for yeah like over a decade so i i think they just you know they, they they are just trying to quote unquote i'm just giving you their explanation i don't agree with this protecting the value mm -hmm. of their ip they know what it's worth they know people will pay for this and he does respect the i don't think it should yeah i would prefer it not to happen but Part they know you're gonna pay for I guess, this i guess in a weird they, way is yeah. it progress that they've just actually allowed you to buy a dlc rather than buy the game again <laughs> so i get that i mean that's something that like you don't have to go out and buy persona 3 Royal. reloaded yeah. reloaded or whatever <laughs> yeah. they would call it whatever goofy name would be called and pay another 70 dollars for that so it is something of an improvement mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is just this is exactly like what Nintendo does with their 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 IP in their games. They they try and protect the value of them, and yeah, I I don't know like this. It's hard to be mad though yeah. for on for me. I haven't played Persona three yet, but like Persona five, I wasn't even really mad at Royal because Persona five again is one of the best games I've ever played in my life, and I felt like I got so much value for the cost and i imagine you know it's the same with persona 3 like there's been universal praise you can still buy the base main game well, and have, said you could skip it but yeah you can, no you can skip the dlc he right said. right yeah yeah and exactly you can just skip the dlc so i don't know if this is the cost to be able to get like an awesome persona 3 remake you still have like the choice if you want to buy it. Again, a lot of conflicting thoughts in my brain. I I think a nice, at least, little bit of compromise would be if you could just buy that the answer for like twenty five instead of having to buy the whole yeah. expansion pack for thirty five or something. Yeah, like, that would exactly. That to me, I'm with yeah. you there. That to me smacks of like the shareholders. One hundred percent. Somebody being like, we need to. This is the price point we're going to charge. We have to make this look like a yes. bigger deal than it is. Yeah, like, and split out things that are like. Two dollar, like what would be like three ninety nine DLCs yeah. into this expansion pass. It's like when I see expansion pass, I think like three or four equally weighted things, or maybe like a couple of substantial things and one bigger one. But like mm -hmm. they're all kind of something. Yeah. And this to me, it's like these are cool. Like the back background music thing is neat, but, but that's it's like yeah, not. Yeah. Not that's like yeah. four ninety nine, three ninety nine. Yeah, that's not wave yeah. one. That's that's a that's yeah. a patch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're so it, right. Like for com 
for comparison's sake, I had to look it up because I didn't make sure I wasn't losing my mind. But like the Xenoblade Chronicles Three expansion pass, Future Redeemed, the DLC everyone like mm-hmm. loves that I love, you know, like swear by it. You couldn't buy that piecemeal. You had to buy the expansion pass to get everything mm-hmm. for that. That was only thirty dollars, and they gave you that. You know, I, I like I think this, they're a little bit more similar, but the Wave One and Two stuff, like giving you more costume variants, giving you new modes, giving you new like jobs, like like. Just for a comparison's sake, like Atlas went higher price <laughs> and is probably, in my opinion, giving you less for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And, but at the same time, other, you know, they are just doing what other people are doing because you still can't buy Future Redeemed separately from the expansion think, pass, which really I think sucks. it's just so more, much more interesting than just like, oh, this expansion pass is 35. I think it is like an. Like, you could look at the industry with what is happening here. Again, going back to that Grand Theft Auto thing, it's like, we've right. been talking about how they're going to price that game, because everyone's talking about how games are so much more expensive, and we're seeing that with the layoffs and everything, and it's like, our game's going to start, you know, doing a lot more stuff like this, like locking things out behind expansion passes, or, you know, we've seen $100 three-day early access versions, that's become this common thing, so... It's really interesting to me. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All I can say is I hope maybe they actually do some revisions in the answer. And it's like different somehow, mm-hmm. you know, because it is coming in September. I think I, when I heard the announcement, I like saw some reactions saying they thought it was like, oh, it's dropping like now or something. And it's like, oh, September, that's a little bit further away than we expected. So maybe they're taking more time with it. I don't know. That's knows. interesting because I saw the the almost opposite where like people were like, oh, you could have just told us about this, you know, and if you just put it out right now, it's like you were just, you know, hold it like keeping a secret, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, then the fact that it was it's not coming out to September is like, oh, OK, OK. So like, yeah, you're, you're taking your time. You're still working on it, whatever. Oh, I don't think they were like happy about yeah. it. I think they were just expecting it like, oh, here we go. The one, yeah, you know, yeah. you know. One two whammy here, and then like, oh, they didn't. You <laughs> One know? two whammy. But the expectation was in the moment. Oh, they're gonna drop it right now. Here we go. You know, not happy about that. <laughs> uh, next up, the first Berserker Kazan. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Nexon and Neopol. Uh, this is in the DNF universe, which forgive me for not really knowing anything about. Same, yeah. Um, but uh, it is a single player action RPG, um, and. Uh, yeah, parry. Yeah, parry the game. You better learn. You better know how to parry oh. if you play this thing. <laughs> they actually do yeah. talk about that. It's, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the gameplay is like just parries. Emphasis <laughs> on stylish combos, <laughs> fast dodging, and precise parrying. Yep, yep, yep. I saw some range filth though. You heard? <laughs> so can, you, can you parry the range <laughs> filth though? <laughs> uh, tells the story of the dra- the great general Kazan, the ancestor of all slayers. After he was falsely accused of treason. Whoa. Uh, Some double cross. Yeah. Every step of Kazan's bloody quest for vengeance against those who orchestrated his downfall. Dude. Marked by a dark fantasy world, gritty, manga-inspired visuals, and intense, aggressive, and ever-changing styles of battle. Combat looks really freaking cool, uh, but the environments... I'm not fully sold on just Yeah, they look a little empty. A little empty, a little samey. Good point. Yeah. The emptiness yeah. is definitely the vibe I'm getting yeah. from a lot of it. Whereas you expect in these types of games to like walk around and encounter mm-hmm. something. Like even if it's just like an enemy, like unique enemies, and you're not you're seeing like the big boss fights, but you're not really seeing the remedial enemy variety mm-hmm. that you, you expect in this. And then like just the traversal. Like, you know, how many times do you like fear traversal in some of these situations? <laughs> yeah. And then it didn't, you know, really scream out that I uh, you have to worry about it just yet. Obviously, it could be the case in the game when they, we, you know, it's finally get our hands on it, and there's like, yeah, that, that's all mm-hmm. there, but the, the presentation really didn't illustrate that. But I think it just focused on what they probably needed to focus yeah, I mean, on. I mean, they were really know? focusing on this one boss fight. They even, like, show it, like, yeah, going yeah. into the second form and everything with the giant arm. and Pretty sweet. Combat uh, looks really, really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's coming to PC, PS5, uh, and Xbox. I didn't see any reference for a date, so I don't know if that's this year or next year or when that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, we got. A, Looks like it might be a while. Yeah. We got a new trailer for uh, Tales of Kinzera Zao, which I'm really looking yeah. forward to. Uh, but I also kind of feel like since I played the 
demo recently, which is still out there. Nice. Uh, so hit that, hit up that demo. Give it a go. I didn't get a, like a whole lot more out of this particular trailer. Um, there's some like uh, later abilities and characters and bosses in there. Uh, looks like there's some kind of like sort of like mid-air launch kind of thing. There's like a purple icon where like almost you already have a double jump when you start, if I remember right. But this is like a different kind of like launcher uh, thing that you could do. Um, and then uh, there's like a spear that you could throw and activate switches from a distance. And there's also like a floating glide that I didn't have access to in the demo. Um, but that's coming out pretty soon. That's April 23rd. Uh, I'm a little nervous. PS5, Switch, and Xbox. I'm a little nervous, blood, because I saw Prince of Persia like didn't sell that well and it's an established brand prince huh? of persia is mm-hmm. huge uh-huh. and the reviews 13. were incredibly glowing yeah but it was like perceived as i mean it wasn't a new 3d full-blown prince of persia yeah i think yeah. there's that uh, working against it a little and, it, and i think they said and i think they said themselves the sales were good because they're working on a bunch of updates yeah. they were updating they like yeah they're still updating the game and they're so it was like three hundred thousand you know, at one point that, and, that was an unconfirmed rumor i'm looking it up now uh different sources it, it, it doesn't seem confirmed yeah so i'm i'm unclear okay i'll keep digging okay i saw yeah. three hundred thousand at one point and it, the sentiment was like mm. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Okay. Like, for one, uh, these games, like, you know, they're, they are they don't require as much crazy budget. So, they're like, yeah. they don't have to sell bonkers numbers to do well. Good. Um, and, yeah. And, and, again, like we were saying, like, I think part of the, you know, quote-unquote disappointment or whatever that people might be afraid of with Prince of Persia is, mm-hmm. is that legacy, right? It, yeah. it is that, like... Long term higher expectations, franchise expectations, yeah. Thing. And it's like, look, there's an awesome new Prince of Persia, you need to play it. And you've got these guys that are just like, oh, but it's 2D, and then mm-hmm. you just write it off no matter how good it is, yeah. Whereas, with at least with Zhao, I, I feel like you know, this is a new IP, it looks so awesome. Um, and so it's it's gonna have like it's just gonna have a, a, a different measurement for, for yeah. success. Um, and it's you know, it's under EA Originals, so mm-hmm. you know, EA's getting it into things like this. Um, so good job, EA. Yeah, I don't say that very often, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, EA Originals. Like, yeah, there's there's definitely a a, a good team over there. The, the games they pick have been pretty consistently yeah cool games. That's coming up. That's right around the corner. Yeah. Heck yeah. What do you what are your uh, what are your thoughts on length? What do you think? Oh, I don't think it'll be super long. Mm-hmm. I'll twelve or fifteen for like completionists probably. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We'll see. I- I have seen a few other people quote that number. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Insider Gaming mm-hmm. is apparently the source, so I don't know. But um, okay. yeah, but they said it made maybe 15 million in revenue. So okay. I don't know. Chill. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm the the worry was because uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna go back to Prince of Persia because of the backlog, and then it's like, all right, are they, if they if this comes out, are they going to skip it because they still need to go back to Prince right. of Persia? Or, yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, we just had Ultros too, which is another Ultros. cool Metroidvania. Yeah. Um, uh, next up, uh, I don't know if we have a lot to say about this, but 11-Bit Studios is back uh, with Frostpunk 2. Uh, they re- revealed the release date. This is coming out July 25th. Yeah. Um, and uh, you guys just talked about how hardcore this yeah, it the is. first game was. Um, and then uh, Isla, I know you're into it, but uh, oh, I played it for like like an hour, and I was like, I, too dude, intense. I suck at this. Yeah, I was what like, about this? Is it's like hard. a civilization esque. Like, how do you describe uh, this game? Yeah, I mean, yeah, in the in the abstract, yeah, it it's a little more maybe like Crusader Kings. It's kind of, it's just it's fucking hard, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is Don into this? Don's buying me Oreos in the bodega right now. Okay, because I see I see like. Power lines and Don loves that. Don does love power lines. Yeah. So. Gabby has a friend who likes this, yeah, that's what you're who claims not to be a gamer but beat Frostpunk. <laughs> Whoa. So. Nice. Good. Uh, I, think that, I think the reports are, are out on that one. What, one quote I have: uh, Much of the tension comes from introducing different factions within the city walls, just like real life, vying for allegiance. Jeez. Uh, will you bend your decisions to the survivalist nature of the Ice Bloods? Whoa. Uh, advocates of adaptation over development, or will you side with the methodical technocrats, technocrats. champions of technological progress? 
Perhaps you might even side with one of the more radicalized groups you meet in game. It's up to you as the city steward. Hmm. I love that those guys are not the radicalized ones. <laughs> right? Names like that. Uh, and then uh, finishing off the Xbox preview, uh, we got a closer look uh, at this Capcom game with uh, that one we originally saw. It. We didn't like even know the name of it. We, we thought it was only Mushu for uh, like yeah. thirty seconds. Uh, but Kunitsu Kunitsugami, uh, Path of the Goddess. Uh, which is this very fascinating blend of uh, strategy and action. Um, kind of has a very, like, a, a, like a more advanced version of, like, a tower defense game. Yeah, I was totally expecting more Trek to Yomi and not Pixel Junk Monsters, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And yeah. So this trailer, like, blew me away, and it made me even more excited because I love tower defense. It yeah. seems like you, like, set up the, the path and then go down in it like yeah so running? there's a day night cycle that's it in, in real there's a real time cycle so you you only have so much time game. in the day before night falls uh, and in the daytime you you guide the goddess along the path and uh, you free different people from uh, the the demons which they call like the seethe. Uh yeah they call them the seed s-e-e-t-h-e do they have scales uh, <laughs> Scaleless. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you you rescue people, and then you use the the goddess's masks, which are like the source of her her powers, to assign them to different roles. So they uh, they also had uh, the day after they Capcom had this um, closer gameplay demo. Where they had a Capcom highlights stream, and uh, so there they a couple examples. They said woodcutters, which are good at close combat. There were archers, of course. There are ascetics that use spells, and then you also have a carpenter who can uh, repair different contraptions and stuff that are in a village. Oh. So you have like different traps and and you're like guard tower and, and stuff. Yeah, maybe yeah, they can heal that. Things. Awesome. And then when night falls, all of the the demons, the seethe, come through the Tori gates, um, and y- you have to hold them off uh, for the night. Uh, and even during night, though, you can. Um, go up to your your different villagers and stuff and change their roles and stuff and kind of change strategies on the fly. But you do, like, actively attack them yourself as well. Yeah. It's like dungeon defenders. Seems kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, And then uh, when you get the uh, maiden up to the Tory gates, uh, you you, uh, she, like, leads the village in this dance that cleanses them. Purge the defilement. Yeah, and, and purges them from... <laughs> yeah, you got to purge that defilement. From uh, yeah. being able to open up to the demon realm. Um, let's see if there's anything fun here with the, uh, the description. video games, blood. There's no fun. <laughs> no fun to be had. Mount Kafuku. Um, That's pretty fun. Players uh, must harness their combative skills as they defend the maiden, adapt to ever-changing battle conditions, fight alongside the villagers, and use the power of So's dance-like sword techniques. Enjoy a fusion of real-time strategy and exhilarating action by repeating this day-night cycle in order to purge the defilement. Oh, yeah. Woo! Restore the land's peace with So and Yoshiro. Yoshiro is the, the woman. Oh, yeah, and then the the uh, the big centipede boss that they show there at the end is is, is what uh, they refer to as a festering seed. Uh-huh. So, Interesting. Yeah. I got that in college. <laughs> Uh, but that's coming out later this year yeah. on PC, PS5, and Xbox. Also, is going to be on Game Pass. Great. Which is great. Uh, these guys, uh, I never <sighs> got to play this, but do you remember Shinsekai Into the Depths? It was like this underwater uh, like exploration <sighs> game mm. Capcom put out years ago. I had to look it up. Mm. Um, anyways, they this some of the same people okay. that, that worked on that. So. Yeah, I'm very excited for that game. I think that uh, that made me more excited than the first time I saw it, mm. uh, which is always a good thing. Oh. I think Damian had a cat attack over here. Yeah, Damian's cat attack for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, Damian had stepped away for a few few minutes, and then we, we looked over uh, and his camera was dangling. I think that was a thunder that shook. Oh, jeez. Like, like, that's hey, in the room. Some yeah. Bundy. Stay safe, Tommy. I was like, I just like heard it, and then I heard like a, like Dude. the drop of the camera. I was like, oh. Damiani, 
I never, how often do you get to use this when it actually makes sense? Damiani, batten oh, down the hatches. <laughs> he doesn't have any hatches. He doesn't have any hatches. It doesn't make sense. He probably doesn't have shutters on his windows. And I, I thought guess. that was like, that's like I don't live by a coast. <laughs> yeah, I don't live by the ocean. Um, and Dummy, and on Damiani boat. wept for there were no more hatches to batten. Damn it, all right. <laughs> Uh, d you missed it, Damiani, so just quickly, I don't know if you had any take or anything of uh, Kunitsugami, the Capcom game. It's like... Uh, I... Sorry, I was watching along with you guys as you were talking about it, so I didn't see what they said that was new, unfortunately. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll we can just move on to the next Give one. Give them a moment for up. pity's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did you like, I mean, Huber, are you stoked for it yeah. or you still want your Onimusha? I'm, I'm very excited. This trailer made me more excited because now... It's, it's not Onimusha. It's not, yeah, yeah, now it's, oh, it's like this awesome tower defense game, which I'm like super into. I haven't, I haven't played a tower defense in a, in a hot minute, so I'm very excited mm. for this. No, definitely. Okay. Uh, I also want to get your take, Huber, on The Outlast Trials. Yeah, dude. Which stream this week. Had a good stream. It um, is good. But you've been playing a little bit afterwards, too. Yes. Uh, the Outlast Trials is very, very good. I love Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower and Outlast 2. I love this franchise. Uh, I think it's one of the scariest franchises out there. Uh, if you're if you're into like jump scares, you know, I like to say like Amnesia, Silent Hill, or you know the scariest psychological horror games. But Outlast, hands down, is the scariest jump scare game. You know, putting you on edge, making your adrenaline rush. Uh, but this one is so different because it is co-op, four-player co-op, and. It's not as scary because you have people there, you can talk to them, you know, right. you're together, but it still captures that uh, that adrenaline rush vibe because you're being chased, you know, someone will bust into a room and you hide and it's like, did they see me? I don't know. Yeah. The, just that fear. Yeah, that sense of panic. When the it's sense like, of panic. When, when you get spotted, like, I still am not entirely sure, like, what am I supposed to do? How do I get away Run. from this, this guy? Go to the dark and crouch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hide. Uh, there's uh, They're still following me though, Isla. Yeah, the uh, get good, I guess. I don't know. The night vision is back instead of a camcorder. Now you actually have night vision goggles that they that give are you. drilled into your skull. Yes, because uh, oh, the, I missed that detail. The evil corporation uh, from you know the original is running experiments. This is a prequel, like decades before mm. Outlast, and there's you know hidden lore throughout. It's telling a little bit of a story. There's a little bit. I need to like fully finish because the, the primary goal is to uh, uh leave the facility it's like yo when when you, when we're done with you you're allowed to leave you know mm -hmm. uh so keep running those trials really because they're like yeah they haven't you like burn all of your personal information mm -hmm. like you are reborn now everything that happened yeah. on the outside it's in the past you got beef with somebody you leave it at the door yeah <laughs> but there's like a guy by the exit and they're like yo when you're uh you know Keep running the trials, and you'll okay. you'll earn your path to freedom or whatever. It's like earning your your path to freedom. I mean, when you go through that, they're probably just gonna like electrocute you <laughs> or something. You know, you just yeah, I don't gas trust you. any of that. No way. Yeah, they're not uh, letting you out. So just like Outlast, this is a hardcore triple X rated M hard R video game. Yeah, this is like yeah, very full nudity. Yeah, the full Outlast approach of like we're just gonna have nudity, and it's. It's just there. Yeah. It like, it, it, there's not really seemingly any point other than to to shock you. Mm, sure, 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 sure. The nudity, I, I suppose. Uh, you know, blood blood doesn't like the the nudity or the romance. I'm not even necessarily <laughs> saying blood doesn't I don't like, like it. it. I'm just saying it's like, <laughs> it's it it's just there as a matter of fact. <laughs> yep. Like this guy yeah, is bodies nude. Bodies have nudity when your clothes are gone. Yeah. That's yeah. how it is. Um, but it's getting a documentary it, blood. But getting into the game, it's four players. Um, they said you can play solo. I don't know if it fills in bots or if you can actually just go through level solo. I know you can, but I, I think it's always online regardless, which may be annoying. I don't I don't know that for certain, though. I'm sorry. Hmm. Um, but four players, and you run trials. There's two different types of trials here. There's trials, and then there's challenges. Okay. Trials um. are the main, you know, 20, 30... 40 minute long matches where you're going through 
Um, you got a series of objectives. You, you have a series of objectives. You, you get into it. Yeah. So the first one is like you're in the police station. By the way, this is all in like a warehouse where they build props. But the first one is like the police station, and you have to kill this witness, and you have to like push this cart along and find keys throughout the map and unlock doors to and, and power up the generator. And power up the generator to kill this supposed witness. Then I then uh, the challenges are also in the police station, but a different environment within the in the police station um and they're shorter it's like um you know go find keys to bring him back to the gym to you know destroy this corpse because the corpse has uh you know evidence and we want to destroy the evidence uh that then was something I, that kind of surprised me is that like our first run took 45 minutes yeah, yeah. then when we were like better at it it oh, still yeah. took like 20, 30 minutes. Like, these are substantial. Yeah. The challenges are really short. Those are like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. The challenge ones. Um, yeah, I was talking to Gabby, and I was like, dude, I want to see speedrunners of this game. It's probably insane. I was saying that, too. Uh, and then the next one I did was the Orphanage, um, and that one was similar. It was like, you know, go through, find some keys. Um, it had different puzzle mechanics. You had to do this like Resident Evil 2 wavy line. There were two wavy lines. You had to like sync them up. So different objectives, different Couple environments. Wavy lines. And I just really like the co-op element of it. It's been so jolly whether whether people are on mic or not. You can easily ping things, hand people things. Uh, you can you can separate and. Uh, complete objectives at the same time, like different, you know, because yeah. sometimes it'll be like find three yeah, keys. We were, yeah, we were calling out the key symbols and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I was playing right before I went to bed at like two in the morning one time and I grouped up with some randoms and they were so nice. There was a level one with us and they were like, they were like, oh, this person, like, yo, are, are you familiar? Like, do you know how to do this? Everyone was so nice. They were like smoking on their vapes. They were like, it was just like immediately friendly. They were so chill. Uh, so like really good community. I haven't had any like toxic vibes yet. Um, That's good. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just loving it. And then one of the, one of the coolest things too is a hub world or a, or a hub ties this all together. Yeah, you can decorate your cell. Yes. <laughs> You're locked in a cell, but <laughs> you can decorate it. It's so awesome. You can customize your character a little bit, very rudimentary, not not the best character customization, but you do create a character, but you have your own personal room, your little bunk room, and they're like, yo, make it cozy, make it personal. Yeah, but it's, it's, just, it's funny to me because it's like... Yeah, you're like, again, you have a thing literally drilled into your face. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we're going to give you some cash. You want to buy a milkshake machine? Yeah. <laughs> you can, like, change the wallpaper and the bed and the carpet. And you can add little posters and little knickknacks. And, like, it's pretty basic, but it really goes a long way into just helping you get invested in, in your character and, and your space. It's awesome. Um yeah, you finish a, a level and you get XP, you get cash, you get upgrade points. You can upgrade your character at the pharmacy to get little oh, perks. Oh, right. Yeah, I didn't get to the upgrade stuff. And yet. then you can get one of four rigs as well. You can get like a stun bomb or a, a landmine or a, a, you know, a healing spray. And uh, that's the character progression too. And that seems like it'll take quite a while to get that going. One balance thing I do really like uh, because, you know, you're kind of queuing up with randoms. It'll match yeah. make. So one thing I like is that... Once you finish a, a trial, anytime you replay it, you actually get more rewards. So it's not as much of a bummer to replay it because like, okay, they're giving me more, you know, nice. more currency, more XP if I finish it. Um, also, when you beat uh, a level two, it'll unlock additional things that you can buy for your room, mm -hmm. which is cool. And it doesn't show you what you get. So it's like, oh, I beat that. I unlocked a new wallpaper. Oh, let me see that wallpaper. It's like, it's got a nice little progression, but, uh, you know, the actual playing together is just really fun, and it works really well. Again, like I said, with with microphone or no no mics, like I've had really good experiences both ways. Huber, one of the things I appreciate this having played quite a few of these with with uh, you guys yeah. is uh, when you go down, yeah, down, 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 down. People can still revive you. People can still get a syringe. Yeah, and you can. You. you bleed out, and you can get picked up. But if you fully bleed out, yeah, you can find a syringe, and you're back in the fight. Yeah, yeah. Because that's always something that like always feel like so you're like so right. just defeated when it's like, oh, I'm gonna watch 15 more minutes I, of this yeah, match. I'm gonna watch, or I'm just gonna quit out, and I'm not gonna see. I can't totally. contribute. I can't do anything. I'm just. 
I just got unlucky, and this mm-hmm. dude came and stomped my face totally. while I was bleeding out, and totally. no one was around. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really good, and you know, and there's still risk. Like you still have to like get by. Yeah. Everybody to get to the person that's down, yeah. or you know, get 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 by the enemies. Yeah. The other crazy thing that we saw during the stream was with the psychosis. Psychosis! Yes, <laughs> but thank you. Dude, I almost forgot about the psychosis. Uh, there are Dude. things, you have three green bars of like sanity basically, and some minor things will like take away a bar, or there's this like pyromaniac gas mask freak just that comes sprays up behind you, you. And sprays you in the face. And psychosis in this game is actually insane everything gets really crazy looking there someone walks at you with like freaky spiky hair waving all around yeah, just kind of damaging you dude, yeah. medusa looking freak uh you can find an antidote to remove that but if you don't and you're like it's so perfect bloodworth because it's so contextualized when my character had psychosis i was actually just sprinting through the map Mm. And I feel like that's actually what would happen. If someone went insane, they would just be like, ah, just like sprinting around, sprinting around, because it's like, what else are you gonna do other than just sprint everywhere? It like made sense, and it actually made me feel like my character was like going insane in the game. Uh, so a really cool mechanic. Yeah, but the cr- on top of that though, one of the things we saw is sometimes the psychosis will make you see yes. players on your team that are not there. Yes. You guys were directing oh. me to like, yeah. oh. It was amazing. It'll be like, Isla, there. Isla's right there. And then Isla would walk right at me and just stab me in the gut, and it wasn't Isla. <laughs> there was a there was a perfect moment where, like, I had the right amount of psychosis, and, and it was Huber, Gabby, and I, I was like, I saw blood miss, miss the objective, you know? And I was like, blood, you just walked right by it. Yeah. Blood, blood, you just walked by it. <laughs> yeah. And then he walks over, and I see him walk over and just stab Gabby <laughs> repeatedly. And I was like, Blood! Yeah, and, then, and then he disappeared before my very eyes, and I look over at Blood's TV, and he's not even in the room. He's way not there. Yeah. It was amazing. It's so good. Yeah. Also, yeah, because I was like, what are you guys talking about? I was like yeah. looking around, like, what are, you, what are you guys telling me? I don't see anything here. Yeah. Also, I think of, like... Um, like uh, you know how like Call of Duty Zombies was like really cryptic. Sometimes a lot of those those mm. zombie modes were like, right. what are you even supposed to do? I feel like it it handles the objectives really well in this game, where it'll be like one at a time. It'll be like, all right, find the three keys. That's what we're doing here. Just find the keys. So like really good objectives that you know last a few minutes in between them. And last note, this is a co op game, but I have had so much fun solo queuing. Mm. I was worried about that. I was like, oh, am I going to need, you know, three other people to play this all the time? And it's like, it just works so well. Like, everyone's on the same page. And, like, even when you separate, it's okay. You can still feel like you are contributing and progressing. Like, you don't always need to be everyone communicating right next to each other at all times. Obviously, it'll help. But, like, you can, you're kind of encouraged to kind of split off and, nice. and find things. So, again, if you're curious about this, but, you know, you're like, oh, maybe I you know, don't have enough people to play with or something, it's like, yo, solo queuing is is A-OK. So I am really excited. This is get, this is my new right before I go to bed game now. Nice. Like Fortnite's on pause for a bit. Like every like one run before I go to sleep, Outlast Trials, I am hooked. Very cool. Love this franchise. Keep it going. Um yeah, did anyone else have anything they want to throw in there before we move on? Yeah, he said it all, but it was, that game was sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go check out that, that uh, VOD for that stream. It was a good time. Yeah, we'll stream it again for sure. I'm just pleased that due to the the B-roll of that I was using from our stream of us in the middle of four of us, we just had picture in pic- picture, 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 picture <laughs> in picture for this B-roll. Of the day. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yes. Uh, next up, live service versus life eater. Jeez. Uh, oh, yeah, so it, uh, basically taking two totally different stories from this week, but th- they show a contrast in, in how this industry is m- attempting to move forward uh, and sustain itself. Uh, so first of all, uh, from a report from GameSpot during a uh, Morgan Stanley speaking event, uh, WB was there talking about their future plans, Warner mm-hmm. Brothers. 
Um, the guys that shut down everything and delete movies. Yeah, um, more on them later. Yeah. So War, Warner Brothers had stated uh, that Suicide Squad's sales are disappointing Whew. and AAA gaming is volatile. So the future for their games will lie in more emphasis on live service, mobile, and free-to-play. This is insane. Uh, they gave a live service Harry Potter game as an example. Quote, rather than just launching a one-and-done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, a Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that is live service, where people can live and work and build and, and pay and play and in pay. that world in an ongoing basis? God, they are so freaking desperate. Whenever They're they say- so desperate for their monthly freaking rent check for a live service game. It is insane. They actually made a game to outsell Call of Duty. They actually did it. Yeah. Then they made another game that is a steaming failure, a steaming pile of failure. And and they're ignoring the success, and and just focusing on the fail the failed game because they want their their month to month like that that is scary actually that they can make the number one selling game of the year like twenty two million or and something, it's yeah. it's not enough that's right. apparently not enough <laughs> that they would take like even a mediocre live service game because those people are spending money every month that's bleak. Yeah. That to me it's, is it's even more bleak, dude, when you realize that every time one of these companies pitches one of these like uh the metaverse or like yeah. this kind of a thing, they always throw in people can live, people yeah. can work yeah. in this <laughs> oh in God. this reality. And it's like that, that's that's <laughs> like the Ouroboros of capitalism yeah. is just like it's like swallowed itself a second time when it's just like the product you're paying for, you also work within. Right. Is well, just like oh my dude, god. Go, so okay. going, well, that's the thing. Going like, back to dystopia to Roblox, right? Like, obviously very successful. I, I work and, in Roblox and done a lot right, but it's like this is sort of the thing that people are seeing is like oh well, the, the users can make the content, right, and then right. the other users will pay to play that content. And you that, do work in the, there basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, Piscatella was particularly uh, troubled by the fact that play was the last thing on that list Mm -hmm. after work and build and live. Yeah. Um, It's so scary. Yeah. It's really like, ah, they they made, like, Hogwarts was the number one selling game, and it's not not enough. It's not enough. You weren't here. It was still in the top ten last week. It's still selling insanely well. (sighs) (laughs) It, it, and, oh, I know, like, so many, it's, because a lot of companies have been chasing the live service, mm-hmm. obviously, but it's it it has like a fresh perspective now because of this statement, and it just like shows the value and how much every like company wants that. Every studio just wants that so badly, and yeah. how valuable it actually is when the number one selling game just isn't enough. Well, and then here here's what's crazy when we get towards the end of this 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 write up. Uh, they didn't have an exact quote, but apparently WB had also said that they have no idea how the gaming market will evolve. But this is the future that they're building for like 2026 and 2027. Basically saying that they'll succeed because they have great IP to capitalize on like Game of Thrones, Mortal Kombat, and DC, and they own a bunch of studios. And I'm like, wow. again... Didn't Suicide Squad just disprove this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, and also, like, how do they not... I mean, the short-sightedness going around in the human race kind of just whole cloth is kind of incredible to behold. But, like, how can they not see that, like, they're going to dilute all these brands and they're going to make experiences that are so shitty mm-hmm. that they're going to destroy gaming... Like, in the long term, like, if this is the future they're building toward, you know, where games aren't fun anymore, yeah, and that it's it's like a job, you know, like, that's that's going to sap the only reason that people play these things. Like, so many people loved Hogwarts, and it's like this big single-player game that people loved, and now you know the next one is just going to be live service it is basically what he, what yeah, he basically exactly. what he pitched. And, and going back to, you know, and like, it's still a bummer that... Naughty Dog's game got canceled. Yeah. The Last of Us multiplayer yeah. game got canceled. 
But again, their reasoning was it's like, well, once we do this, and they're like, that's he, that's our company because yeah. we have to just keep churning out keep, content keep the lights constantly. On. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually liked that they just said that. Yeah, yeah. Like that felt that felt actually pretty honest and pretty like yeah. uh, self aware. Yeah, yeah. Um, but on the flip side. On the positive note, basically, to, I think this is the same day. It was at least this week. Uh, Strange Scaffold, uh, makers of El Paso Elsewhere, uh, led by Zalavir Nelson. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Announced a five-game partnership with Frosty Pop. Uh, and you can go ahead and play the Life Eater trailer now. Uh, so the five games that they've got in the works are Life Eater, Life Eater. which is a horror fantasy kidnapping simulator coming April 16th. Okay. They re- revealed the date. Jeez. So basically... You're this guy who is in service to this, like, evil god, and, like, you have to, like, kid- kidnap people and, and, and sacrifice them or do, basically do whatever the god tells you to Jesus. do to keep him from ending the world. Brutal. Um, yeah. So it's pretty nuts. Hardcore. And there's, like, some, like, timeline editing stuff going on? Yeah. I, I, I have a hard time, like, something? fully picturing how the gameplay works, but it's, yeah, it's, it's got some crazy stuff going on in it. Well, another one that he uh, that they had done... Recently, was Space uh, Warlord Organ Trading Simulator, so I think it's a little bit more on those things. <laughs> All right. I wonder if it'll have the the like Fallen, or whichever movie that is twist where, or like, not twist because it's never confirmed really, but like if it's in your head or not, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like is there a god or is the god just you mm. telling you these things? Uh, the next game is I Am Your Beast. I am your beast. Which is a fast-paced, covert, revenge, thriller, FPS. Uh, they basically describe <laughs> it genre as, as, as a black control. Jason Bourne. Oh, hell All yeah. right. So it's like, you know, you're, right. you know, they're like, oh, you got to do one more job. But then it's like the organization, you, you know, yeah. you've got to like fight against the organization that you've been working for all your life or whatever, yeah. right? So kind of spy thriller stuff. Dude, the Bourne game on Xbox 360 was so sick. Shout <laughs> out. Uh, next after that, an untitled multiplayer kaiju horror cooking game. Kaiju, that's a magic <laughs> word for humor. Love it. I don't know what that is, but I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'll play that. Is there, is there a trailer for that or no? No. Re- rewatched there. Pacific Rim recently, Huber. You did? Kaiju, yep. Hell yes. There's some cooking oh, in that. That oh. theme song, man. Can't handle it. So, so sick. Uh, I, I, the next one that I Dude, also... we're going to cancel the apocalypse. I also don't know what these words mean together. An untitled After Hours Library Horror Game. Dude. Dude. Psycho Librarian. <laughs> yes. That's sick, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, and then they're working on, uh, um, they're uh, configuring a mobile version of El Paso Elsewhere. Perfect. So, uh, But his whole thing with this deal and partnering with this company is finding, finding somebody that was on the same page as their studio uh, Zalavier is emphasizing that games can be made healthily and sustainably without overhiring or endless crunch. Quote, video games don't have to get created and murdered in the dark. Meaningful and profitable games can be made without destroying lives. Yeah, WB. Games can be made better, faster, cheaper, and healthier. We've been doing it for five years across 11 games, so we're going to keep doing it. Sweet. Preach. Uh, That also puts you in a better position to give your players the games they deserve. When you stretch your teammates and your energy, you make worse games. Corrections. No one deserves games. (laughs) Uh, Quote, going forward, Strange Scaffold isn't seeking arbitrary growth, risking the lives of our collaborators and the quality of our projects in the balance. We're doing more of what we do best, creating focused, weird, and wonderful games with a partner that shares our production philosophy and belief in serving our players. It's a reminder that in an industry increasingly focused on live services or just shutting things down if they don't immediately turn a mega profit, there's another way of doing things. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me, Bloodworth. Yeah. And even talked about like, you know, like a lot of people would see like, oh, you got this partnership, you got this deal, you're going to hire a bunch of people. And he's like, no, we're not going to overhire and get a bunch of people that we're then going to just end up laying off later. Yeah. So. Nice. Good. 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 It's about keeping people working normal hours perfect, and projects that are appropriately scoped for who they've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think he's been incredibly smart. I love watching his TikToks. Um, (laughs) He's definitely a disruptor. He's definitely getting a lot of attention in the industry uh, right now. So, yeah, 
Uh, and he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super nice guy. But yeah, so there you go. A tale of two studios. <laughs> and hopefully, Neither alike in dignity. Hopefully more people will follow uh, Zalavir's example and they will continue to be successful. I wonder if season one is even going to make it for uh, Suicide Squad. Oh. Oof. That, no, they just announced the date for Joker. That's part one of four Blood right. Oh, you're saying the full thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, yikes. Yep. We've got more to come, but if you've been enjoying the show so far, please take a second to like and subscribe and ring that bell on YouTube. It helps us and it helps you stay connected. And now, a word from our sponsors. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your own online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. I love that Shopify can be there for you at any scale, at any stage of your development. They're there to grow with you, get bigger and better and brighter with you. And that's how you take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States. And Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen. And millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash allies, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash allies now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash allies. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. Okay. It is time for our patrons' top 10 detectives in video games. Sweet. This is sick. Yeah. Valentine. So, uh, Better be on the list. Just, oh, shit. Uh, just to catch you up and give you context. Uh, Eddie Valentine. We have this <laughs> happening in our, in our Discord uh, every month. They, uh, they nominate. They have a theme. They nominate, and they pick a top 10. Uh, So if you get to be a patron at $5 or up, you can get in that Discord and get in on this action. Uh, Some notes from Screaming Argonaut, one of our mods. uh, They did not manage to break uh, the ties. They were trying to get people in there voting at the last minute. So we have a lot of ties. Um, And also, uh, for the purposes of this list, uh, we defined a detective as, quote, anyone who investigates a crime or mystery. Okay. They did not have to be a professional. So Didn't Geralt, have to be a job title. Uh, so Geralt counts. Uh, sure. Investigates I don't know a lot Geralt of murders, list, Blood we'll Earth, Quite yeah. a lot of murders, dude. <laughs> if Geralt's not on this yeah. list, I'm walking out. Geralt is not on the list. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Geralt is not on the list. Com- the list is compromised. <laughs> the list is 100% compromised. Is there anyone else who has compromised Onyx- the list? No, no, no. I don't even... Whatever, just just go. Or Huber. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dude, think about all those crimes Geralt solves. It's so good. Sure. That it makes sense. My it totally God. Makes sense. Incredible. That yep. blows me away. Damiani, any any detectives that Batman, you think should be on this? I mean this Batman list? number one? Yeah. Batman is number one. You got that. All right. You got that. Redeemed. <laughs> Redeemed. Sorry. Damiani. So you got number one. Um <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm on the spot. I can't think of anything. I love what I'm thinking. <laughs> I can see the list. Oh, sure. Anyone from uh, Disco Elysium? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Is he in the top ten? There's Disco. Disco yeah, Elysium. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Like, yeah, like so. Like, is like like 
it just investigates like so this can investigate anything or a sorry crime. just a detective a crime yeah just a, it has to be a crime crime though. or okay. mystery yeah but yeah crime or mystery so like okay mystery the so. player in the nonary games <laughs> i wonder uh, yeah, who's who's from like the ace attorney series who who they pick for that uh we do have phoenix Wright in the number two spot okay yep. there we nice. go uh, disco elysium was a uh, harrier dubois sick uh in 11th place with 11 votes 11th <laughs> 11 11 11 11 make a wish wow um yeah, let me uh, hit this top ten then. Uh, in ninth place, first tie, we got two in ninth. Uh, Hank Anderson and Connor apparently were together on this uh, from Detroit Become Human. Dude, my boy Connor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, I love Connor. Holy Did cow. Did Heavy Rain make this? Oh, my God. Keep going. Uh also in ninth place, Nick Valentine. There it is. Nice. nice. Fallout 4. Oh, dude. You, you guys see that Fallout trailer? No. I have not seen it yet. No. The I, TV I, show trailer? No, I haven't seen it. No. It doesn't look horrible. Nice. Nice. Maybe. Good, good, good. Walton Goggins, dude. Love Goggins. Dude, Val- Val- Nick, or Valentine, like, made me obsessed with Fallout 4. The sole reason I like that game. Nice. <laughs> Number seven. Cole Phelps, L.A. Noir. Phelps, of course. nice. Get all the memes in there. Yep, yep. <laughs> keep them, keep them in the mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I like that game so much. It's a little. Also at number seven, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, because so many people say he's a bad detective. <laughs> Thirteen votes. It's just the Pokemon belongs. pander, dude. Just blind loyalty. <laughs> he, he, he solves the cases, right? <laughs> he gets there. Uh, we got t- him. two tied for number five. First up, uh, Dick Gumshoe, also from Ace Attorney. Okay. I did there not know who was his name. <laughs> Dick Gumshoe. Great name. And uh, Norman Jaden from Heavy, Heavy Rain. Is number what? Five. Yeah, that's miraculous. Wow. <laughs> All right. Is that the Jason guy? Um, Jason! Jason! No, the Jason guy is just a dad. Oh, yeah. This is the... the oh, it's the other guy with the... The, the bigger the guy? AR thing, right? Is that it? I don't remember. I played Heavy Rain two times, yeah, but the remember. second time was many, many, many yeah. years ago. Many years ago. Second place is a three-way tie. Francis oh, yeah, York yeah. Morgan. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> All fly run, dude. God damn from? it. Deadly Premonition rules. Deadly Premonition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deadly These games are so insane. Uh, Phoenix Wright, as we said, is also there at the second spot. Uh, spot. Uh, and uh, Sam and Max, Sam also there. Max. Oh. Second place. Yeah. Great. Dude, Pretty shout good. out to, uh, or maybe it's in here. I haven't looked at the past the top ten, but the, oh, what's his name? Geralt. The player character in the Blade Runner computer game. Oh, yeah. sure. So that game fucking rules. Sick. Nice. And then as we said, Batman is number one there. The world's greatest detective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't argue it. Uh, also down in 11th place. Yeah. Uh, what's who we got? Who we got? Read here? them all. Read them all. I want to see it all. Oh, I want to read them all. No, There's... I want I want to know every single name okay. that was better than Geralt. Power okay. through, dude. Yeah. 11th place, we have Big B Wolf. From the Wolf Among Us. Sure, 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 sure. Carmen San Diego. You got Carmen oh, San Diego yeah. above Geralt. Yeah. She's more of a thief. <laughs> Absolutely. Isn't <she>? Yeah, <laughs> that's wait, an easy that's, one. Come she's on. She's not here. a detective. Yeah, she's, a, she's a thief. Yeah, she's not, yeah that's not right. Hell, wait, this is what? not right. Oh, you're right. Is Carmen no, San Diego a, is She the just thief. has the hat. They, <laughs> that's, they got confused you by were her. You're a detective outfit. in Carmen San Diego. You're looking for. It's a detective game. I think my friend's dad invented Carmen San Diego. Oh, what? I that's fun. So. I think so. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. All okay. Right. Uh, Garrus Vakarian from Mass Effect. Sure, sure, that sure. That one's sure. a bit of a But Geralt didn't make it. Wretch, I guess, but yeah. He's a cop, but he absolutely is way more towards detective. Okay. Yeah. Don't read C-Sec. the name. Don't read the name on the next one. It's a spoiler. Really? Because I already read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not really a spoiler, but you don't know his name for like half the game. Okay. 
Disco Elysium. Yeah, mm. we did the Disco Elysium one. Uh, also at 11, Ryo Hazuki. <laughs> <laughs> Really? From Shenmue. Even I'll say that's a stretch, but I will <laughs> allow it. You do some detecting. You're solving You're solving things, uh, you know? Uh, sure. You're interrogating people. You're finding clues. You're tracking down leads. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, 16th place. We got like five <laughs> or six here. Date Makoto from Yakuza. Date, dude. Hell yeah. Good pick. Kyle Hyde from Hotel Dusk. Love that people still remember Hotel Dusk. Uh, Naoto uh, Shiragane from Persona 4. Mm-hmm. Nice. Love uh, Persona 4. Herschel Layton from Professor Layton. <laughs> Great. There we Perfect. go. Perfect. That's Layton. good. That's a good one. It's a very good one. Uh, Sebastian Castellanos. Castellanos. There it is. <laughs> At 21, we have Saga Anderson. Nice. Right. On her tail, twenty second. <laughs> Hang on, chat, Alex Casey. Chat had a, chat had a poll. Who's a better detective, <laughs> Carmen Sandiego or Geralt? <laughs> and chat sided with Carmen Sandiego. Oh no! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> By a wide margin. Dude, Geralt is legitimately <laughs> one of the best detectives of all time. Geralt is trying to find Carmen Sandiego. Yeah. <laughs> He's has to go through some portal. Yeah. To go find her. So yeah. many sick crimes in <laughs> The Witcher, dude. It's insane. There's so many good ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, also in 22nd place, uh, Goro Akechi from Persona 5. Yes. Uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, Koichi Adachi from Yakuza. Yes. Then in 25th place, we have Carmelita Fox from Sly Cooper. Okay. Love it. Uh, we have... <laughs> Herlock Sholmes from Ace Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Shelby from he- Heavy Rain. Sissel from Ghost Trick. Nice. Uh, Yagami from Judgment. Yep. Uh, that's 28th place, Yagami and Sissel. Great. Uh, 30th, we have The Inspector from Oberdin. And Tex nice. Murphy. Tex yeah. Murphy. That's a... Squeaked in there. Yeah. Uh, thir- There's always that one deep cut right at the bottom. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so now we're in the 30s. We've got to go up to 40s, though. Whoa. All right, rapid fire, rapid fire. 32, Daniel Lazarski from Observer. Andreas Mahler mm. from Pentiment. Nice. Hieronymus Lex from uh, Oblivion. Hieronymus Bosch. Jenny LeClue from Jenny LeClue Detective Oh, yeah. Jenny LeClue. <laughs> Not that familiar. Was, uh, I saw that game. I saw that game at a um, IndieCade. Um, mm. If I'm not mistaken, they might be fans. I don't. It, this was like years ago. It was cute. I liked it. Great. Uh, Kaname Date AI The Somnium Files. <laughs> Nelson Tethers from Puzzle Agent. Ronan O'Connor from Murdered Soul Suspect. Hell yeah! That one's <laughs> close to my heart. Well done, whoever that was. Was that one vote? Three. Three votes! Yep. Well done. Uh, 39th place, we have Ashley Mizuki Robbins from Another Code. We just got that collection. I still still need to play that. Uh, Mizuki from AI The Somnium Files. And Shuichi Saihara from Danganronpa. Yeah. And then... Uh, at the very end, with one vote, Arno Dorian from Assassin's Creed. Nice. I'm Arno, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, next month's theme is going to be uh, regular battle themes, which means non-boss fight songs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Heck yeah. How are you even going to do that list? Wow. Yep. Yeah. Have wow. Fun. <laughs> that <laughs> is, have fun. that's a tall order. There's so many good ones. <laughs> oh my uh, God. Nominees are going to open Wednesday, March 13th. Like no right or wrong answers on, on that one. There's so many good ones. Yep. Wow. All right. It's time to get well Don in here. Well done. That was great, patrons. Well done. Well done. Well done. Love it. Love it. Love it. Get but Don on a mic. on the way. The Geralt slight though. I'll be feeling that for a little bit. Poof. I'm here. Yeah, Don. Tell me about this Slave Zero X is like cyber 
punk looking, shinobi looking yes. action game. What is this? Yeah, that's what drew me into it. Blood is the look of it. The look of it is awesome, right? It has these blood and gore. Yeah, blood and gore, retro looking, pixel gra- 2.5D platform action, you know, beat em up, slash em up is what it is. And uh, it's actually a prequel, I found out, to Slave Zero, which is a okay. game I didn't know about, but this is a 1999, I believe, late 90s game, Huber. Ported to the Dreamcast, I think originally I did not know on about Windows, this. Okay. okay? 3D shooter, it's an odd thing, because it's a 3D shooter, the original. So for the prequel, which is Slave Zero X that you're seeing here, yeah. They went for a uh, 2.5D sort of uh, beat 'em up style, so they changed format a little bit. But I love the going back to the look of it now. Biopunk, they say in the trailer. It's okay. so cool what they did here, what you're seeing, because it's like, okay, this is the prequel set five years before the 1999 original, which was basically this 3D shooter with sort of low uh, res, you know, textures. And here you see, you know, technologically, I think they placed it in the right time. We're looking at sort of what I would say, like, you know, maybe 64-bit style, you know, 3D objects in the background with these giant pixel uh, characters in the foreground. So I think just aesthetically, it's super charming. That's what's... Aesthetically, it reminds me of Alien vs. Predator a lot. Oh, a little mm. bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has that arcade yeah. look. Of the, yeah, you know, it feels 90s, like something yeah. that, like, back in the day, like, you would only see something, like, with, with yeah. sprites this big in an arcade game. This game yes. is incredible looking. It looks sharp as hell. So that's what's drawing everyone into it. And speaking of the looks, you can actually, what we're seeing right here, you can... Uh, augment the palettes of your character and the levels so you can actually customize like the look of the game and all they have all these like really cool little filters and stuff you can you can unlock them okay palettes and stuff like that which are actually really neat for this uh so the gameplay now look it's actually pretty deep it's like almost like a fighting game to be quite honest because oh, okay. It's all about, it's this really fast, frenetic sort of fighting where you're, it's all about stringing together combos. Here you see, so you have a health gauge and then you have a meter underneath. And the meter has EX moves, basically, as you fill. Okay. Each one of those increments, you can use EX moves while you're building up your meter, which is really what, from the beginning of the game, that's what I was doing the most of. I was like constantly using EX moves and almost never filling my meter up completely uh, because the EX moves help you string together combos. They're faster, they're more powerful, and they're just easier to keep your momentum going while you're burning them, right? Uh, and then you have other things like you have an actual little projectile, which also, again, you know, you're not using early on that much. You get limited counts of like grenades, you know, different sort of projectile weapons you can throw. But uh, you're mainly using your slash early on. And anyway, when you fill your meter all the way now, if you do fill your little EX meter all the way, you can do a... Uh, Oh, darn. What the heck's it called? A Fatal Sink, I think it's called. Mm. Le or Lethal Sink. I think it's called Fatal Sink, where it basically just becomes overcharged and you can just do unlimited EX moves while it's burning down the meter, okay? And the last kind of mechanic that's built in is that go that orb uh, up there on your HUD. You can use that to, like, or I think there's actually something coming up here soon where they'll, they'll do it where you can, like, burst away enemies to create space or also activate your EX meter. So it's tough. It's relentless gameplay. It's satisfying. It's not the kind of gameplay, Mike, that like immediately in the first hour, for instance, it's like you got to you got to work your way into the rhythm of the game. It's not one of those things that's like mm. immediately satisfying to like, you know, with the with the impact of the hits and everything like that. But as you're going, like by the first hour, I was like, ah, you know, I'm kind of feeling it. Yeah. By the third hour, you're like obsessed. You know what I mean? And it feels real good, and you're getting better and better and better. And then as you get later, especially in the game, you're not seeing a lot here, but you can really do a lot of aerial combos. You uh, start to get better at, and also um, your fatal sink. You start using a lot more, which actually creates this cool like flame orb around your character uh, while you're using it. Here you see these sort of like mini bosses that you have to fight. There's some yeah, much larger bosses that you have to fight. Yeah. And uh, and this whole world that it's in is really sick too. This like dystopian sort of uh, mega city, I think they call it. So, okay, maybe, Man, peach trees. Yeah, exactly. You made me think of Dread a peach lot. Trees. <laughs> and it's got a lot of cool elements in the background where like because you're always on a 
2D plane, but you're in 3D space and the track as you move kind of curves around a lot and, you know, this sort of winding path. So you'll see elements in the background, sometimes characters even that are like approaching from a distance, basically, that you'll work your way to and arrive at. So it's really neat kind of layout of the stages, too, even though they're mostly linear for the most part. Any uh, XP or unlocks other than uh, the filters and stuff? So the filters seem like the main thing to unlock. There's like all these like little lore card things you can find and unlock, a ton of them, you know, to give context to the story and everything. Um, And then you have a shop also that you can buy you can upgrade your suit, first oh. of all, in all kinds of various ways. Like yes. you can up- upgrade your health. You can make your meter charge faster. You can uh, make the burst uh, more powerful, all kinds of different. There's like five stages to each, I think, that you can upgrade. And then you can buy munitions, you know, health packs and uh, different. There's like a few different types of uh, little projectile weapons you toss. So it's quite a bit of variety. Uh, it's nice because this type of game, for instance, does it doesn't have enemies that regenerate first of all which i think is a nice thing to call out because this type of game you often come upon that thing where it's just it feel when you're looking at the gameplay a lot of times you're like is this just spewing enemies at you and it's like no it's like there's a locked number of enemies and it's really cool limited respawn because you can actually you can actually work your way like sometimes you get overwhelmed and i'll just like start running like run back a little bit to give myself a little distance and they'll come at you and follow you all the way through the stage so it's like kind of sick how the ai works on the on the you know character on the NPCs and everything like that, but uh, it's fun and it's difficult, and there's definitely some difficulty spikes up the wazoo, little places you get stuck at, but it feels quite satisfying when you work your way through. How many difficulties options are there? There's not a difficulty option. There's just straight up. Yeah, you just are. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's. Strap in. Definitely, you gotta strap in and just move forward. But um, it's satisfying. I would say it's been quite satisfying. The music I should call out, sick music, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Kind of like industrial, drum and bass. Some stuff is almost metal sounding, a bunch of synth, you know, stuff like that and stuff. So it's just a really nice, like, high octane, high p- energy, but in a good way uh, that's not overbearing, I would say, you know, uh, soundtrack. So killer soundtrack on this thing. Um, the only downside so far, I would say, you know, first of all, it's a $30 price point, so it's not cheap, all mm. right? But if you're looking and enjoy this kind of game, I think it would probably be worth it, okay? A mm-hmm. uh, little bit of um, re- re- kind of repeatability in the enemy types and stuff. You do get introduced to new enemies as you go on, but you are kind of like, you know, a little bit feel, some of them just look particular same, you know, some of their attack patterns will be different and stuff, but there's a lot of similarity in the look of some of these enemy types. And then there have been, there were, I gotta say, there were a few, which hopefully they'll work these kinks out, but there were quite a few, uh, I think the game froze up on me about three or four times. Oh, wow mid-stage or something like that where just like hard lock where I had to just close it all down and, mm. you know, jump back. Nothing devastating. You know, these are fixes, obviously, they're going to get to, so it's not like end of the world like type of stuff. but fix for Exactly. Things, so, yeah. yeah, just be aware of that's the state it's in right now if you jump in. But um, most of it, very enjoyable so far. I would, I'm enjoying it a lot, yeah. Sick. Yep. I'm so that's Slave on. Zero X. Check it out. Poppy Works, I guess, is the developer who... Uh, has a pedigree of a bunch of these old modern retro games, you know what I mean? So look up their library if you like this kind of thing. So yeah, Blood, I'm glad I discovered this. And I think you told, I think we discovered it together, right? Originally? There was some point when it was like in one of the Steam demo things that we checked it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So the lighting effects are so Oh, cool. and some of the lighting, uh, I didn't want to spoil it because so I didn't show further levels, but some of the lighting effects in this game, Isla in particular, are like rad as hell. Cool. Just on, in the 3D space of the background, yeah. too, they really bring it together. And then on your character, too, the way the lighting works in this is like super Like the impressive. L train going past while you were fighting those mm. guys. It was really neat. Uh, what happens cool if you die? You go, but there are some checkpoints uh, within the longer levels, or you go back to the beginning, but you uh, maintain the stuff that you've upgraded and all of that stuff. So, yeah, so it's great. That's friendly. Yeah. That's very friendly. So it's fairly friendly. And uh, again, some of the stages, some of the stages are kind of short, some of them are pretty long, but they do have some checkpoints in there, so it's nothing like too punishing. Definitely a couple of places that I've gotten stuck, nothing I haven't been able to fight my way through. Yeah. So, enjoying Slave Zero X. Check it out. Nice. Also this week, uh, we'll get the worst out of the way. Uh, First, uh, Warner Brothers announced that they are shutting down 
Rooster Teeth, after more than 20 years uh, producing videos, streams, podcasts, live events, games, like all kinds of stuff that those guys have been doing. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of good friends uh, who are over there, uh, including James and Elise and Omar. Um, we've been a partner uh, with their podcast network over the years, um, and you don't have to worry about anything that is going on with that. Like it's just some back end stuff we'll have to change. We might end up having to have merch on a different site or something like that. Um, but for the most part, it's not going to impact us. It's just you know we're we're feeling for all our friends that are over there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's end of an era. End of an era. Feels like WB being WB. I, you know, WB. I know it's been a struggle, but mm. still, yeah, yeah. Crazy to hear they were like trying to looking to sell the company, and they were like, what they say that all the <laughs> usual people they'd approach are no longer in business either. So like, there's no one around to like buy. You know, like people are like, oh, let's sell off the company. There's like no one buying, so yeah, it's, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Isla, I know you, Elise and Omar in particular are very close. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was texting with, I've been texting with Elise. I mean, we text pretty much all the time anyway, but like the last two days, we've just kind of been talking like back and forth. And yeah, so it's, you know, that that's kind of the funny thing about this is like, like these are some of my best friends. So it's like uh, tweeting something about it, like felt strange because it's like well i'm texting with them about it yeah <laughs> you know so it's just like yeah this is you know maybe not maybe it wasn't like completely like off the radar you know it didn't like blindside anybody i think but like it's definitely a huge thing and like a big huge deal and it all everything so much stuff is still up in the air so it's just like just i think just patience and having space for them and like you know hopefully everything I'm, I'm sure everything will you know come out all right like maybe they'll do something like we did i don't know i don't know that i'm just saying that you know it's one possible avenue uh or maybe they'll all just go write books or something <laughs> you know <laughs> go become farmers <laughs> <gonna> become farmers. <laughs> just, comedy just, farmers just get out you know <laughs> while you can who knows <laughs> But yeah, obviously I hope they're all okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, They'll be okay. WB also announced that they're delisting indie <laughs> games, small radios, big televisions from Steam and PlayStations due to, quote, business changes. Uh, that was originally published under the Adult Swim uh, label in 2016. Uh, what was my favorite thing? Unforeseen business something. What was that? Do you remember that? Oh, economic hen- headwinds was one of them. <laughs> I don't remember what unforeseen was. Oh. But God. But yeah. So in response, uh, the developer uh, Owen Deary has uh, taken the game and made it uh, free to download on PC. So nice. Yeah. Well done. He's unfortunately had Rocky. Wait, don't mind. You got like it's like coming, yeah. Okay. No. Cooper's always trying to pull my hair out <laughs> yeah. on this show. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, Rogue hair. But yeah, so yeah, it just it just it was kind of a weird random thing. They just like they sent him a letter and was like, yeah, we're gonna delist your game now. So is it okay that he like released it for free like that? Is that a? I mean, I think he you know he was getting royalties and stuff, so I think it seems to be okay. Okay. But yeah. Um, this week, uh, we, we heard about this project happening, uh, but we actually got to see, uh, some of the fruits of it. Uh, the PlayStation blog highlighted five games from India as part of the India Hero Project that started last year. Nice. Uh, so you can go check out that blog article. Uh, there's a nice variety of some, uh, you know, cool different things shown there. Uh, there's like a slice of life narrative game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like this side scrolling boss rush where you're like fighting gods and mystical creatures and stuff. And then there's a, a combat racing game where you control a meteor flying through space. Whoa. Like attacking other meteors flying through space. I'm not sure. Like I want to see footage. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so head over, take a look at that. Uh, oh yeah, Heber, you, you weren't here for all the sales talk. Uh, yes. But so Helldivers 2. Yeah. 
did better smash hit in its second week than its first week. Zeitgeists are a funny thing. Now it's doing better in its third week yeah. than its <laughs> second week. Mm-hmm. Piscatella refers to this as inverse decay. Inverse decay. Because <laughs> usually the yeah. first week is the best and it just goes down and down yeah. and down and then you have some little blips from sales and stuff. But yeah. it's like, no, it's like it's going up um, week after week. I want to say it's because of vi- like the clips of this game. I see them yeah, every single spot every social media spot there are just like these incredible clips and that sells the game because i compare it to skull and bones in a way they kind of came out and just around the same time and they have like you know the little bit of a live service like long term type thing but like i like skull and bones but it is so boring to look at Mm -hmm. sometimes it is just like so slow sure whereas anytime i see hell divers it's like People blowing up, aliens coming in, mechs. It's like, dude, what is that game? It just looks so cool. You want to, yeah. you want to play? Yeah. And then what's the guy's name? Joel or whatever that they, they was like the game director or whatever that they not director, but yeah, he's like a DM for the whole freaking yeah. I heard about Hell Divers thing. Yeah, I have questions about that. What's going on there? No, yeah, I think it sounds <laughs> it crazy. sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, starting ma- Saturday, March twenty third at nine a.m. Uh, Pacific Time, Victor Lucas is going to start posting classic episodes of Electric Playground so awesome. every week, every Shit. Saturday morning. One Saturday morning. <laughs> going through the entire nice. episode of, or the entire catalog of classic episodes uh, starting almost three decades ago. So awesome. Um, what a hero. Uh, and he's going to be in Love chat. Love you, Vic Lucas. He's going to be in chat every week giving commentary and answering people's questions. Amazing. Yeah. So coolest thing. Keep an eye out for those uh, crazy Jeff Keeley clips. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the one where he was like on a battlefield or whatever in like Star Wars Battlefront? <laughs> no. It was crazy. Okay. It was like he was they were treating him like he was a reporter in a war zone with oh like my gosh. laser beams flying everywhere and people dying and like it was a high budget I, dude. All kinds of people in costume. I do miss that. Doing element. an interview with the dev. I miss that element of games media a little bit of just like the insane waste of money to like just do the weirdest things like that. It's wild. Dude, yeah. When I think about all the stuff we like, like did back at uh, the stuff we did back at like Viacom when I was just like, why are you throwing this much money at this? So much. I'm like, I know how much I cost and you shouldn't be paying this much for this. Well, uh, well, then, then you, like you also juxtapose it because you're, you're specifically probably talking about the GTTV stuff, right? Yeah, or Spike. Mostly, I'm talking about like Spike. Oh, sure. Or just like game previews. Like if a, the developers previewing a game and they like have you come out and they just do some weird, crazy. Sure, but what, I, what I'm specifically talking about is the 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 weird contrast in the production and stuff that they greenlit for that show for Game yeah. Trailers TV. Yeah. And then to like say, no, nah, we're only gonna air this at like 108 a.m. after no, some UFC or something ended, you know? And it's like, how? You're yeah. spending this much money on this show and you're making it impossible for anyone to watch yeah. it. <laughs> like, That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> Crazy. A um, couple of release dates. Uh, PC version of Ghost of Tsushima is coming out on May 16th. Iki Island. And 10 out of 10. Greedfall 2. Yeah, dude. Heading into early access in the summer. Cool. So. Very cool. Uh, One of the best sevens of all time that I still have yet to play. <laughs> There's the Princess Jones Peach Showtime it. demo out now. Wait, really? Really? Yeah. I, I, Crazy. I'm posting these things. Dude, I've been up since 4.45. It <laughs> was yesterday. I was up since seven yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a demo out now. Uh, Internet sleuths have come to the conclusion that Good Feel is making this game. We still don't really know, but they think it's Good Feel. They're the ones that made uh, Yoshi's Yoshi. uh, Crafted World, mm-hmm. Kirby's Epic Yarn, Wario Land Shake It. Oh, okay. So good, good pedigree there. Nice. Um, oh, play this thing. But you're gonna have to watch this on your own because you need the music. Yeah, yeah. Overwatch is doing a Cowboy Bebop collaboration. Dude, I do not know how I feel about that. It's been stuck in my head all day. It's just it's it's like four or five skins and some weapon skins. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. The, the thing characters. is, pay up. Ash looks pretty good as. as if you like Cowboy they. Bebop, you don't have to care about Overwatch. Just watch this trailer. Yeah, it's sick. Trailer. It's a good trailer. Didn't it? It's funny. <laughs> is I mean, it's the two thousands. A lot of people did parody mock-up videos of the intro yeah. for this. Like, it's a very played-out concept, but, like, it actually What's has been so long again? that I feel like, yep. oh, it's cool again to do it, mm-hmm. but, yeah. It's, it's also all- funny because they're keeping the timing of some of the shots in the intro, which, like, are sort of slow, some of them, and, like, makes yeah. sense for a title sequence, but yeah, the trailer, it kind of lacks energy. There's some things that are off about it because they have yeah. to use their own i guess like assets for like the character images and silhouettes but sombra as as uh ed looks cool and ash as faye looks real cool very cool yeah. i don't notice anything else i, th- I just think it's a sick trailer really. but yeah um oh and it's been uh revealed two weeks to me what's that huh I was just singing Bare Naked Ladies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm uh, freaking out, blood. <laughs> I, I got two Dragon Dragon's Dogma 2 updates. Uh, oh. One, which uh, Isla alluded to earlier, the character creator and storage demo, I don't know what you call it, is out. Storage Shit, yeah. demo? Uh, storage demo? To like free up, make sure you have enough hard drive space? No, I think it's just for your characters to... <laughs> oh, okay. to oh. Your it's, characters it's to, to be It's to simulate stored. how often you're going to need to put... Uh, items and on your pawns in the fucking oh. inventory because you you become encumbered like every twelve seconds in this game. Oh no! But anyways, that came out today. Uh, you can create up to five player characters and five pawns before the full game comes out. Dude. Uh, and it's been revealed that the scenes of meat cooking in Dragon's Dogma Two are indeed live action FMV real shoots this real is meat. So funny to me. In an, out, in an interview with Japanese outlet 4Gamer, uh, Hideaki it, Hide Itsuno said, uh, we could have used CG to, pick, to depict the meat, but we decided to spend the money on buying good meat <laughs> instead. <laughs> That's how it meat. came to its current form. Eat your heart out, Remedy. Each type of meat <laughs> obtained in the game has different visuals when grilled. So yeah, it's like, what if we're going to spend a bunch of money on CG, let's at least get some... Let's let's get some meat instead. Come Did on. they we talked about end the up meat for a while in the interview? Too. Did they end up eating the meat when they were done with the shoot? Yeah. I'm sure they did. Oh, okay. for sure. Awesome. Yeah, good. yeah. Good. That's good. the whole that's yeah. the whole point. Right? That's, that's the perk of yeah. doing it live. Let's get some meat. Awesome. <laughs> Talking about meat. Just dragons <laughs> dog- like that is the most dragons dogma <laughs> energy <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like of mm. all time is that like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, there's just FMVs of meat for no for, for no other reason than they wanted to eat some meat. <laughs> because we gotta also, spend money on this one way or another. I was also so reading funny. about how the game has like an even more intricate like affinity and bond system where you can because in the first one it's like way under the hood, but you can like effectively like build up your bond with like a shopkeeper so much that the game thinks it's your girlfriend or something so that at the end sequence where like it picks the the person nearest and dearest to you for a thing to happen it could just be some random npc (laughs) right and apparently that system is like way more expanded in this one i'm very excited but yeah also they say like anyone can die pretty much yeah game is nuts yeah you have a limited amount of time to like Go to their coffin and resurrect them, something like yeah. that. Yeah, but if if not, Drake then it's dogma, dude. Yeah, if you don't get to them in time before they're buried. Whoa. <laughs> then <they're gone. laughs> Goaty souls, dude. Jeez. <sighs> All right, it's time for love and respect. Love and respect. respect. Nice, Tommyani. From Brandon K. Gan. Hello, everyone. I'm in the midst of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And aside a couple of annoyances, I am absolutely loving my time with it. Annoyances? What? Yeah, what are these annoyances? <laughs> you can't I just a, I'm kidding. I'm, I got an annoyance. I got it's annoyances. Aside the point. It's not the question. I can get into it with annoyances. Oh, I got some annoyances. As such, it's been a challenge to avoid spoilers, especially considering IGN has been dropping massive spoiler videos what feels like twice or thrice daily to include posting the entire last hour. Wow. <laughs> that is 
Freaking Pump the amazing. brakes, IGN. That was insane. Well, I thankfully dodged that. It had me remember they also did the same for Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, uh, but not any That's other big That's a cautionary tale. <laughs> they, were trying to just, they were trying to do you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> the question, what's the point of a major outlet Posting yeah. major spoilers is? on oh, launch week, easy. if no. not launch day. He easy. Say clicks. clicks, but like who the they, f they is need watching the that? Uh, I mean, who? A lot of people don't care about spoilers it, no, and just want Brandon to see Jones it. No, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. You're either playing the game and you don't want to know the ending because you're playing the damn game yourself, or you're not playing the game. So why do you even care? Why would you watch the ending? I don't understand. I mean, no, there are people who can't get access to the game. Maybe it hasn't shipped yet. They don't care. They they, they, they they care about the journey. They care about playing the game. They care about seeing it. But, like, they just have to have that knowledge, that information. That's Like, that's honestly, crazy. super fans, like, super enthusiasts, like, actually, a lot of them that I've known uh, do not give a shit about spoilers. They want to know everything as soon as fucking possible mm-hmm. so they can be like, I know I'm, like, the smartest person about this series or whatever, and I can now, like, move on and start talking and theorizing about this. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. That, Without getting into a, a spoiler, point. people want to know the ending of this so they can start getting into, like, all right, what does this all mean? Mm-hmm. Shit, like, let's go. There is, like, there's, a, there's a fair point there, too. That's a good point, Damian. What, what Damian is talking about, because, you know, a lot of the reviews I said stuff that. about the ending. I understand. You know, mixed feelings about the ending or whatever, or questions about the ending. I understand. And so that was a week before launch. So, yeah, well, as soon as, you know, there's people that are like, well, if I hate the ending, maybe I don't want to buy the game, you know, kind of thing. So a lot of people watching it that way. Good point, Blood, because I did see a lot of discourse about, I loved Remake, but good God, that ending, what did they do to Final Fantasy VII? Like, I hope they don't do that again. And there are people who probably like, all right, I want to know, this is going to be like, majority of the game, awesome, feels like a one-to-one thing, and it's like, oh, ending fuckery. Okay, great, I get to look forward to that. They just want, like, the warning, like, okay, I can just, like, ignore the end or whatever or something. Like, they don't wanted that answer. Yeah, how so, bad is it kind of questions. Yeah. Uh, I will say that, uh, yeah, I, I have I have been in this space. Uh, I, I we, we, at Game Trailers, got a Japanese copy of Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and we got those cutscenes up as quickly as we could. <laughs> And the result is oh, yeah. that years later, Sakurai saying that that was the reason that they didn't make as many big cutscenes. <laughs> oh my god! They just oh ended up. But that was that was absolutely our job. Trying to please the shareholders that with those clicks. That was absolutely our job. Um, and it's not just the thing is also Hubert hiding is, behind the mask of "It's my job" too always bothers me. <laughs> oh, that's my Huber job. Also, <laughs> post they want, oh, that's my job. They, it's not, and it's not even just like posting the ending as yeah. is. Like that's like low effort, mm-hmm. like the low hanging fruit. The thing people want, like day one, is like, you know what's coming, Huber. Ending explained explain videos yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they gotta play the game. They gotta play the meta, the SEO. They gotta be the first one out there and start like you know saturating. But that's, it. But that's to that point exactly, Damiani. <laughs> that's the explained. thing. It's not just about who's going to watch this right now. It's about getting in this system. It's about getting the positive weight to the search point. results mm-hmm. so that even five years from snowballing. now, somebody you know, types in Final Fantasy VII ending, it comes up. Because you're one of the first and you have a lot yep. of views on it already and it, and it just keeps kind of like, duh. Yep. And that, again, it goes back to the same thing with the Smash Brothers thing. It's like, got to get those cutscenes up before anybody else. Yeah. So... Yep. Damn clicks. <laughs> Those damn clicks. Yeah, and I remember, yeah, I remember, you know, them being frustrated. I mean, it was like, we bought the copy. It's a <laughs> Japanese copy. We didn't get, you know, we didn't get it from, from PR. So. It's a good, good counter argument, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, breaking news. Breaking, oh no. Um, Akira, Akira Toriyama has passed away. Oh, uh, whoa. Uh, on March 1st, due to a subdural hematoma, he Jeez. was 68. Uh, there's a the official Dragon Ball. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dragon Ball, Chrono a, Trigger, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they put out a statement about it, yeah. That's rough. Dragon Dang. Quest. That is brutal. Rest in peace, Toriyama-san. Yeah. Yeah. Crud. Damn. Okay. 
Um, next question is from O Big Stretch. O Big Stretch. That's a great name. Oh, Big Stretch. <laughs> Hello, allies. I have a problem with the phrase Nintendo is running their own race. I understand the sentiment that Nintendo is good at doing their own thing, different from what Sony and Microsoft are doing. But the more I hear it, the more I think it diminishes their success. Sony and Microsoft have managed to get stuck playing the game in a similar way, while Nintendo has found that an alternate strategy uh, has found an alternate strategy, but they are absolutely competing for the same money from your wallet and same space in your mind. Nintendo aren't running their own race. They're running and maybe winning the same race, just differently. Is it time we stop saying otherwise? Don't. Fair point, I, I guess. I feel like it, it's just a, a, it's yeah. a little nitpicky, but uh, I, I get I don't, it. Sure. I don't get hooked up. Yeah, yeah I don't really get hooked yeah, up on yeah, this. Yeah, same. I mean, I generally lump it into the, it's like shorthand for Nintendo does whatever exactly. they want to do and doesn't follow industry norms. So, yeah. like, disruptor, like, that's the thing. They're like, oh, great, dis-, like, they're great disruptors. Like, how many times Reggie said, like, you know, Visa May would say, like, DS and we were like disruptors, you know? Yeah. Um, but I also think, like, they maybe don't view themselves as much in competition with just Sony and Microsoft as they do with like, with especially in the Switch era now, with like mobile. Yeah. I, I, I do think they do see the mobile space as the big race that they're running, and they do have to like compete with people's times for like handheld space, and that is like the long history of them is dominating that handheld space. But obviously, you know, things changed. You know, starting in the mid two thousands, you know, iPhones and smartphones came out and. People can do a lot more on their phones. So I do think if you were to like get them in a room and be honest, they'd be like, we care more about those type of competition than we really do with like Sony and Microsoft would be my gut reaction. But I also like they're, they do care about what Sony and Microsoft do. Like whenever they say, ah, nah, like that's like, that would always be like when they're, you know, losing or something like, no, like we were like, yeah, we don't really com- see them as competitors. That line they used to say, it's like, you do, you totally do. Mm-hmm. But like, Yeah. It's just how you know, I've always it, it's just Nintendo. How I've always conceived of this is less about like market share race because like yeah obviously they still want your your market dollars you know they want that market share. To me, when I say this anyway, it means they stop trying to have like parity uh, in graphical fidelity or like you know they they're not trying to be 4K. They're not trying to hit 4K 120. You know they don't care and like. That to me is running a different race. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they're they're running and yeah, probably winning in a lot of metrics the console war or whatever, such as it is. Uh, but to me, it's like they're they're not trying to be a big hardcore gaming console. They're trying to be a Nintendo Switch, and that's that's what I always think about with this. Yeah, I think. Um Kind of towards what Damiani was saying, too, I think one of the shifts that we've seen the past couple of years is, um, and it's sort of been there all along, but it's like they're viewing themselves more as just like a general entertainment company, right? And so like what we see with the Universal Studios and with the movies and all of that kind of thing is like, like no, like our our IP, our brand, or, you know, the image of, like, okay, get people interested in the Mario movie, and then all of a sudden, like, okay, then people, you know, get interested in playing Mario games, or even even the games that they have put out on mobile is mm-hmm. almost more in terms of, like, this is an advertisement for, <laughs> you know, our, you know, so you get to know who Mario is or yeah. whatever, you know, that kind of thing, so, um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it just reminds me of uh, the... The Microsoft Activision case, you know, when they were trying to like make these arguments that it's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's only Sony and Microsoft and like Nintendo is not a part of this. And like, oh, no, Nintendo is absolutely a part of this. You know, you go into Target and it's like Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, like they're right there. Like they are very much the same thing. And there are a lot of games that are, you know, cross platform, Mm -hmm. you know, and who can, you know do right and do the best by you know those those third parties and and make those those matches yeah so there are games that will that do come first to switch and then come later to the other other platforms quite a few actually yeah do you think sega will ever make another console 
<laughs> no, no. Why wouldn't it? No. no, no. I mean, beyond like a you know, mini or retro yeah. type thing. No. You'd have to even like they'd have to fully staff up for that yeah. too, and like get supply chains and everything in order. It would be, yeah. be nuts. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's play a game. Been a couple weeks. Played a game. This one is from JG Wentworth. Eight seven seven cash now. <laughs> Eight seven seven cash now. Damiani, have you been watching her enthusiasm? <laughs> because I'm waiting for it all to end to just pay for one month of max. Aren't we all? That makes sense. I'm fair not. Point. I'm good. Yep. Yeah, I'm good fair. Call. Fair, good fair, call. fair. 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 I'm doing the jump around. I use thing my dad's. Now. For HBO, <laughs> uh, they're getting rid of password sharing. Be careful. I know. Eh. Uh, guess the Smash trophy. So we're going to be guessing the Smash Brothers trophy based on the description. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can be from any Smash Brothers game: Melee, Brawl, Wii U, etc. Uh, first one to guess correctly gets a point. Uh, just to reiterate, this is not like a. a trophy like on playstation yeah, or an yeah, achievement yeah. the tro- it's trophies in game the characters yeah, yeah okay that's that what have I thought. little little trophies there of course right so i'm going to read the description and then you tell me which character in smash brothers this could be so this could be all kinds of nintendo craziness where the blank loves to create they've left out some things that are classic trivia tower vibes yep. here okay let's go yep. where the blank loves to create its alter ego is impulsive and destructive, consumed with that hollow feeling which comes from destroying one's own creations. The Dr. Bl- Wiley. The blank appears when a player clears obstacle quickly and the blank's power is low. You have only one chance to defeat the blank. Master Hen? I don't know. I give up. Uh, I feel bad. You should. Damiani. <laughs> These are hard. No no other guesses? Uh, no other guesses. Not even another guess. No Isla guess? I don't know anything about Smash. Isla famously like, I, I, loves I, 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 Super like, Smash. <laughs> like, I was thinking like, like I'm not even clear Sunshine what we're trying Shadow to Mario or something, but I don't think that's right. All right. Something. Trying to guess the character, basically. Oh, okay. Based on the description. This is Crazy Hand. You're very close. Crazy oh. Hand. Come on. Master Hand is the creator. Crazy Hand is the destroyer. Damn it. Gotcha. Okay. Damn it. Just like making love. Like... All right. Everyone ready? We know what we're doing now? Yo, yeah. Okay. Blank is a mysterious middle-aged man who thinks he's the very reincarnation of a fairy. Oh, Tangle. There you go. There it is. <laughs> his bizarre behavior and unique speech are just little pieces of his vibrant personality. Blank travels by way of a small hot air balloon making maps of the lands below him. Pop his balloon, and Tingle will fall to the earth to sell his maps. I inserted the blank there. A so. soul's like where you're Tingle. <laughs> All right. Next up. The blank assumes a forward lunge. Ex- we fit trainer. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to read the rest of these or not, but uh, blank are actually traitors who've defected from the Mushroom Kingdom's forces. Bowser kids. They're a slow and predictable nuisance. Goombas. Goombas. Ooh, I actually heard Damiani first on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just barely. Just barely. Hey. Did I say Bowser kids? Yeah. <laughs> Goomba mm-hmm. kids. <laughs> Bowser kids. It's like an old... Well, I thought like it was, kid. but I, I wanted he, uh, blood to read a little bit more. Like what the, that's what Bowser your dad kids. says. It's like, yeah, the Bowser kids. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Blank loved to sleep and love... Snorlax. There you go. Uh, Snorlax. Huber. Pikmin. I famously love Pokemon. Go ahead. Someone else guess. <laughs> Next up. No guesses? No, if it's Snorlax. He forgot it right off the bat. Did, maybe. Uh, wait, what internet happened Internet connection's there? unstable. I think, uh, yeah, I think the internet's being it, weird. You I there, Damiani? Okay, because, yeah, because I, sorry, as soon as you said I said Snorlax, then Pikmin, then got I was it, like, it, all right, it. someone else guess. Yeah, yeah. Bad time, internet. What are you yeah. doing? 
Seems fine. Now. Yeah, it was Snorlax, Damiani. Okay. Blank has been Blank's number one rival. Number one guy. And best friend since they trained together as children under the same master. Oh. Is that... In, you got to give me a name, not an O. In fact, the headband Blank wears was a gift from Blank. No. Along with being a very... Ryu and Ken. Okay, it's Ken. Ken, nice, okay. nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. It is funny to just blurt both of them out of the same time. <laughs> well, I mean, you might as well guess both. <laughs> 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 Okay, last one, last one. Here is a man who immortalizes animals in mechanical form. Dr. Riley. Because he just loves them so much. Wait, that's not quite right. Instead of using oh, uh, his talents. Eggman. There you Dr. go. Dr. Robotnik. Yep. Yeah. There we go. It's a tie. Three to three. Nice. <laughs> well fought. All right, it's time for bets. This week's bet, Contra Operation Galuga. Galuga. I think of Beluga Caviar yeah. in GoldenEye. Uh, that's out <laughs> next Tuesday. We're going to group stream that. Uh, but before next week's podcast, we're going to go into that arcade mode, which allows four players uh, to play together. And we're going to go for the latest stage, the furthest stage that Don has unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> All four of us are going to hold right and spam the jump button without shooting. How long will it take for all four players to lose their first life? One life. Huber, the stealthy centipede. How long? 23 seconds. 23 seconds. Damiani, uh, the pompous cocker spaniel. So I wrote down on my notepad... Infinite, infinite. Because I'm going to bank on a stage that you won't die. It'll put you in a spot where you can just keep jumping and holding right, and you'll be safe. Okay. I always love it. I always love those. That's what I thought with Hell Divers. Didn't work out well. Did not work that time. <laughs> Isla, the wet hummingbird. Inverting uh, Huber's, I said 32 seconds. 32. Nice. nice, nice. Don, our fashionable manatee. 41 seconds is what he said. 41. Gabby, the optimistic rat. 50, five, zero. Blood is gonna undercut me right now, 50. like he always does. And then like he always me, does. as the effervescent Here we go. One minute and 44. Wow. Yes. Big money over here. <laughs> That's big money, Blood. What's your headspace on that one? <laughs> uh, I think that I think there's gonna be like one holdout or something. One hold. That's what I'm worried about too. It's like uh, everyone else Everyone's dying. Everyone's gonna get hit. Somebody's yeah. gonna keep going. One person will jump for like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Unique pattern. <laughs> yeah. Or we were talking about like potential differences in characters. Like who knows? Mm -hmm. That one character has some weird advantage. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, we all. So we all. We all bet. Right. Yep. If you get the second stage, and this is the bet, I win. Because oh. it's a, it's a upwards. Look at that. It, it starts. It starts after you beat the first boss, and you have to climb up a wall. And it's the vertical. It's the waterfall. It's, it's, it's a remake of one. And if it's that one, you just go to the. Even if you climb out and go to the right, you just stay in the right corner. Some okay. insider trading yeah, going is on some, here. This is collusion. Yeah. yeah. Like I played the demo. Damiani knows I played the, the game. demo. Don gets to control which level we're yeah, using. I played the demo. This is insane. The demo is. I don't know this what's beyond the second level bet, though. Dude. This is a little. I don't know what's beyond the second level. <laughs> The, sec the demo only goes to the end of the waterfall the level, so I don't know what's. I don't know how they reimagined. The Pretty other sure levels. there'll be more than two levels will be unlocked, but there could be another level that does that. We'll see. Uh, last week's bet, uh, the Thaumaturge came out this week. Oh, I've been thinking about this bet, dude. Yeah. Uh, so in that game, you deal with the characters' dark past. You literally confront their demons. You use demons in battles. So I looked through the top 10 English reviews on OpenCritic to see whether Pokemon or Persona would be referenced more. <laughs> Isla bet Pokemon eight times. Damiani bet Pokemon three times. Don bet Pokemon three times. 
Gabby bet Persona seven times, our only Persona bet. And I bet Pokemon seven times. Mm -hmm. IGN used Pokemon once, no Persona. PC Gamer didn't bite, neither one. Didn't bite. Metro Game Central. <laughs> didn't bite. No Pokemon, one Persona. Oh. Shaq News, one Pokemon, one Persona. Dude, we got a match. Dude. We got a match here. God is a geek. Nothing. Didn't oh, bite. Didn't bite. <laughs> Video Gamer, nothing. Didn't bite. Rock, paper, shotgun, one Pokemon, no Persona. <sighs> Game Rant, nothing. Windows Central, two Pokemon. Damn it. No Persona. Oh. And PC of a of Invasion, nothing. Which brings our totals to five Pokemon, two Persona, making oh, it a three-way tie. Damn. Wow. Between Damiani, Don, and myself. Everyone gets a God point. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a point. That's brutal. I should have said seven. <laughs> Which brings our scores to four. Stealthy Centipede. Three for the pompous Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Two for the effervescent Hippopotamus. <laughs> and one for the fashionable Manatee. You get to Manatee do Manatee on the board. Manatee <laughs> on the board. Make a sound. Swing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Swing. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, everything uh, that we are doing here uh, is because of wonderful people just like you who tune in each and every week. Or maybe not each and every week. Maybe you watch once a month. You know, you, just, you enjoy this show. You enjoy the things that we do. You enjoy our streams, our reviews, whatever you like. Some of those folks... Uh, are also able to support us financially, uh, and we appreciate all of that, uh, whether you're just watching or whether you uh, chip in a couple bucks here and there. Uh, and the most effective way uh, to support us is at patreon.com slash easyallies, uh, where you can get all kinds of different rewards, uh, and uh, that includes at that $5 level, you get this podcast a couple days early. You get two bonus love and respect questions. You get an extended podcast, basically. Uh, you get to submit to love and respect at the beginning of the week, uh, as well as the wrong question, and you get in that Discord where you'll be able to vote on those top ten battle themes coming up oh, on yeah. Wednesday. Uh, A lot of good ones. Ten dollars, uh, you could get to uh, contribute to our stream team votes and our community showcase, and then twenty-five dollars up and up our our producer tiers and our platinum producers. Get a shout out on this podcast each and every week. And this month's shout outs go to Javawabs, Elthanis, Greg the Dark Knight, Kettering, Raymond Wheeler the Third, and Forever Ender. Shout out. Shout out. All right, it's time to promote some cool stuff. Talking about that Dragon's Dogma 2, Isla got to play it. We put up a sick uh, little preview this week, uh, talking about the magic archer and the mystic spear hand. The yes. magic archer and the mystic spear hand mystic sounds spear like an anime. Is, is sick. Yeah, um, yeah. You got to play about three hours of that. Hell yeah, I did. Uh, sure. Running around in the dark, fighting some 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 lich guy. You don't even need to be fighting. A white, yeah. A white. There you go. W i g h t. Yeah. Project White, dude. I'm They'll sad that fight game got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so go check that out. Uh, if you're watching this live, this is happening tomorrow. If not, go check out the VOD. Uh, at noon Friday, we are streaming the PlayStation version at, with, of As Dusk Falls. Hell yeah. Uh, which uh, they, they talked to us a while back and, and asked if, if they could put our stream of the Xbox version in the trailer for the PlayStation launch. Mm -hmm. So we're in that stream quite a bit. Huber's in there. Hell yeah. Uh, Isla's in there. Sophia's sure. in there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, We're all in there. Jason, uh, a little bit. We scream, Jason, swipe. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but <laughs> we are going to be streaming so that white. the beginning of that PlayStation version uh, with the CEO uh, and uh, creative director, uh, Carolyn uh, Marshall. Uh, so uh, she's going to pop in and play with us a bit. Badass. Uh, I got to meet her uh, at DICE. Uh, and uh, it was so funny because it was like, oh, you look familiar. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we got talking. And it's like, oh, yeah, like we've been working on that trailer. And she's like, oh, yeah, the trailer's almost done. It's looking good. And they're like, oh, it's like sick. Nice. And then after I got back, I got an email. I was like, hey, do you guys want to stream? It's like, okay, cool. Awesome. So uh, we also have a very, very, very cool video on the way. Don't know the exact timeline. It's so cool. You guys. In the next couple of days. Hopefully we just need somebody to uh, give us a thumbs up. Not in the next couple of days. Okay. It'll be a, a week or more. Oh, okay. There's an embargo. Oh, okay. A week or more. Got I know it. the embargo, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. Got it. Chill. All good. All good. And then next week on this podcast, on this desk, the man, the myth, the legend, Hip Hop Gamer Sick. is going to be here. <laughs> Been trying to get this guy for so long. Yes. Almost had it happen one time before, and then he had to, he had to bail. So hopefully everything will be good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have him on the podcast. I'm going to try to shoot something else with him and Huber. I just want to lock him and Huber in a room Hell together. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he was on Huber Hype one time at E3. Oh, just walking by. Yeah. Walking by. Yeah, yeah. Got him for like, you know, just a second. But it's like not enough. I need more. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Now, Damiani, Don, and myself, we get to split this thing. Three ways, three prizes. You can either do a shout out to something. Uh, you can get a final word. Or you can sign off. What do you think, Damiani? If you have any, I mean, I can do sign off or final word. Unless someone else really wants final word, because the there was the question about the issues with rebirth. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up one, but I can just do the sign that off. That sounds like a final word to me. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Don, yeah, you want to shout out? To save my, What's up? I forgot to say my rebirth issues. Oh, <laughs> it's Don. What's Don want? Sh Don, what do you want? He wants the shout out. He wants the shout out. Okay, and then I'll sign off. So, so Don, come shout out. Don, come shout out. <laughs> shout it out. Shout out. We're wanting to throw our support behind something that needs some attention. Is that what shout out is? Yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I'd like to shout out a little game called Skull and Bones. Look, this thing, <laughs> yeah. this game. It is fun. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's going strong. It is fun. <laughs> it is fun. Huber and I are both still on this thing. Yeah, nice. A couple weeks in, who would have thought? <laughs> it's quite a thrill ride, isn't it, Huber? <laughs> Uh, it has moments of thrill. For I definitely, sure. I definitely enjoyed my time with Don. Yeah, definitely did. I enjoy. I need. I need to sail with you, Don. That yes, needs need to, to happen. Together. That'll change everything. I yeah. saw Don get mauled by a giant sea gator like seven different times. It was <laughs> glorious. I was out of my depth. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Those I went a little pretty heavy. shallow waters. I think you're definitely. No, this thing was like a kaiju. Oh, it oh. was a yeah. mosasaur. It was a literal mosasaur. Whoa. Yeah. I shouldn't have been fighting that thing yet. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know they Spoilers. had those in there. I, Spoilers. Yeah. yeah. For real. No, we know there's like big sea beasts. Yeah, we knew that when you're when you're installing the game, it yeah. does some spoiler where it like shows that there's, there's some sea beasts. Some remember, did you see that? Blog? And even before okay, the game yeah, came yeah. out, they were like part of the DLC is going to be like more sea beasts. Is yeah. there a kraken? I think it's Multiple DLC krakens. coming. Krakens. Multiple crickets. Multiple crickets? <laughs> Multiple. Nice. They, they breed. <laughs> Damiani, give us that final word. <laughs> so hard not changing my final word right there to address that situation, but it's okay. Um, so <laughs> I will just say, wanted a flaw in, in Rebirth. Um, there is a mini game that is required about halfway oh. through the game, and the explanation of the controls and stuff is not very good. I knew several people who were playing it for review who messaged me and like, this part kind of stinks. And I'm like, I didn't have a problem with it, but I was trying to do something specific on it for a thing. And I was like, holy crap, this is very frustrating actually when you are trying to do something on it. But then someone explained how to do it. And I was like, why don't they explain that in the game? That makes it so much more like un I understand it now. Like that's so much easier to understand. Like what the heck? Um, and if you watched my stream last night, you know exactly what I'm talking about. As soon as I finished streaming, I looked something up 
they explained it to me. Went back first try, no problem. Oh, like, oh my God. So Square Enix, you gotta patch that. You gotta fix that explanation. It's a little, little rough, little rough. Okay, that's it. Got it. And we'll see you before the next Blood Moon Rises. Poof, I'm here.